Hello, everybody. An overtime game. That's right. The madness of March is here. And you know what else is here? Recording live from somewhere. This is one and done. Get out the insurance cards, get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard that Green Screens Media Train. Welcome to One and Done, your fast break of college basketball in formacion. And ladies and gents, we did it. It's here. It's finally here. The old large dancerino. And we are appreciative that you are here on One and Done, your fast break of college basketball, Ian Formacion, to break down the opening slate of the big dance. I am Jay Heinrich, your humble host, and I happen to be the conductor of the aforementioned Green Screens Media Train. Find me on X at Dr. William Cannon. Hit that follow button, and I will hit that follow back in the booth with me tonight. Look at these two gentlemen on your screen alongside of me. Two of the absolute best in the business to do it, of course. Starting with the man you know as El Capitan himself, the captain of the Green Screens Media Ship. Find him on X at MC Holland 34. It's the OG of the OGs, Money Mikes. Mr. Mike Holland. What did do, Mike? It's bittersweet, man. It's bittersweet that we have gotten to this point. My brain is com almost completely fried uh, from all these slates in the last two weeks. But finally, we're getting the first 16 of 32 games this week, uh, you know, to start this weekend off. So I'm really excited, man. Like, I, we don't get 16 game slates except for, for one time, uh, two times in the year. So. Looking forward to this one, and uh, hey, why don't we uh, why don't we win the the big prize? I feel like that would be be pretty be pretty sweet. Oh, is there some money on the line tomorrow or something? <laughs> There's definitely some I money. Heard, My entire bankroll is on the line. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that there is a very large prize, twenty five k to first. In fact, on this one, before we break it down, we have to get to him. He's last in the intros, broskies and broskets. But that man right there is. First, in your March Madness heart, you see it right there. Follow him in those Twitter streets at Fantasy Nav, the Baron of Bread of Green Screens Media, Eric, the Blue, Mr. Eric Roma. What's happening, man? Man, 16 game slates are few and far between. 25K top prizes are few and far between. And, and shout out to DraftKings, right? Like, not only did they uh, did they finally dial things up, but they also they added some variety to these slates, right? We've got some survivor slates. We've got all kinds of different buy-ins, all kinds of different single entry options, right there. It, I mean, it looks like we have like a full blown sport that they're actually building DFS around, right? So definitely a lot of fun, a lot of different ways to attack this one, a lot of different ways to get your bankroll in play. So I'm right there with Mike, right? Basically, all my chips are in the center. And we're looking to start off March Madness with a bang. And speaking of which, Snake Eyes starting us off with a bang. Got in here early, <laughs> scooched on up front and center. Bright eyed and bushy tailed. Appreciate you swinging through. Jeff's Jeff's got the million dollar question, right? We we need to we need to have a conversation about where we can push <laughs> where we can push Jay on on his his vocal range, right? We're uh, we're we're definitely gonna get those suggestions flowing into the comment section here. Didn't put up the cat signal yet, but Sam the Sniper up in here with the yo, what up, Sam? Got to be feeling good about his Auburn Tigers making it to the big dance, although they are in the region of death. Talked about that ad nauseum. And then Sam Hogg jump, jumping in, 98% excited, 2% scared, or is it the other way around? When you can't tell the difference, that's how you know that we're in March, right? You're doing it right. You're doing it right. And if you're 98% <laughs> excited and 2% scared, you probably didn't pick Arizona to win the whole thing like I did. The scared uh, factor is a little bit uh, higher on that. But that's okay. We're here to have fun. Uh, Dylan, we saw you hanging out with us earlier on. We were getting everything fine-tuned. I know we got a little bit of a later start than we wanted to, but we appreciate everybody 
hanging out with us no matter what. We're probably going to get into a little one and done after dark on the East Coast if you're watching live with us on a Wednesday night for this Thursday slate. And like both gentlemen said, this is a 16-game slate. Not too often do we get an opportunity to break down 16 games and to observe this occasion properly. All of us, if you have not already, should hit those like and subscribe buttons. Do that. You should... Get over to the One and Done Bracket Challenge Ooh. and make sure that you have clicked the link that will be appearing in the live chat here very shortly. Oh, right there on the screen in the live chat. Boom, boom. Click that link. If you're watching somewhere else, Twitter, whatever, anywhere else in the world that's not on YouTube, get over to YouTube. Hit, all the, hit that subscribe button because to win the One and Done Bracket Challenge, you need to, or to win the prize for the one in the bracket challenge, you have to be subscribed to the channel. You got to come in first place. And all you, gentlemen, a signed Caleb Love jersey. You win an autographed Caleb Love jersey if you win the one in the bracket challenge. Yeah. Mm, perhaps. Well, well, perhaps so. Maybe. My son's favorite player somehow in this world. I have no idea how Caleb it happened, though. So maybe I'll win it. And then uh, you know, there you go. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just, I'll just bring it up on the screen, right? Every, any, every time we have a live show to remind y'all of the dominance of the conductor, that won't happen. Don't worry, don't worry, guys and gals, that will not happen. Oh, man. But we got a sixteen. I, I love the right idea now. of you winning it and then not giving it to your son, just hanging over his head. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I wouldn't even. It would be mine. I would definitely keep it. No, nah, I might give it to him. Maybe. I wouldn't. Yeah, I would. I would give it. To him. Make sure you hit all those buttons for us and get over to the One and Done Bracket Challenge. We're sending out those emails. Won't you submit those forms? Uh, what do we say, gentlemen? 10 a.m. tomorrow would be the uh, 10 a.m. on Thursday morning, I should say, would be the deadline to get in for our bracket challenge. Yeah, that's that's where we're, that's where we're going to cut it off. Uh, right now, we've got north of 60 people who've thrown their name in the hat. Um, although. We're only at about 35 people that have made their way into the tournament challenge. So check your spam. If you haven't seen that email come across, hit us up here in the comments. Hit us up on Twitter at one and done CBB. We want to make sure that we get everyone who would like to participate into that uh, that ESPN group so we can all chop it up and see what you got. Yep. Get over there, do all those things, push all those buttons. We appreciate you hanging out. And don't forget about our guy. At the real Napier as well, our guy Nape C Hustle doing things on the socials for you guys, dropping bets, dropping price picks, doing those things for us on the socials, and oh, doing some things behind the scenes as well. So shout him out, shout any of us out. We will get back to you as we get back to this 16 game slate. A quick overview, Mike. Uh, anything stand out to you? Uh, I mean, this is 16 games, and so. you can do anything that you want. You can play any lineup you want. Everybody is in play. Uh, I might tell you I don't recommend you playing this person, but literally all hands on deck, everyone is in play uh, <laughs> for March Madness. Uh, for tournaments, you're going to have to take some shots. I mean, you need – you're probably going to need close to, to five to six X per player in your lineup. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we're going to see one of those things where you can get away with the zero. There's too, too many good players for Eric, right? Like too many in that mid tier area that can go for 40 where you can't just, you know, a couple of stars, a couple of scrubs, and then just pray that, you know, eight guys in this mid tier don't go at least five X. So I don't know, man, like what are your thoughts on the slate? Yeah, completely wide open, right? Um, we see this all the time whenever there are mid-major teams on the slate, right? Just DraftKings and the algorithm has no idea what to do with them. So it creates a ton of value. Um, you know, in, in this slate in particular, it creates a, uh, a nice juicy mid-tier. There are so many awesome plays in that mid-tier, guys, that, you know, can get into like the 40 fantasy plus point range uh, with pretty reasonable price tags. And also shout out, I mentioned mid-major players being on here. Kind of dope to see Tucker Devries and Deron Holmes as the two price Dude, kings on this slate right? heading, heading into March Madness. Like, That's awesome. These these are guys that like just just for 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 sentimentality's sake, I'm probably going to have a few shares of them in that survivor pool, just so I can see if they advance and and ride their opportunity as far as they can. 
Sentimentality. Is that did you just create a word? Yeah. Sentimentality. I like it. I like you gotta have the sentimentality to go far. And we're gonna have it all. Whatever that means, we got it here on one and done. So make sure you hit those buttons for us, like and subscribe, get into the one and done bracket challenge, and we are going to get into the first of sixteen games we will cover, even if it's mm-hmm. briefly. We're talking about I all sixteen game. games. Up and down this slate. Hop in the live chat like Jeff and Sam the Sniper and Sam and Dylan have. Everybody, um, go ahead and hop in there. As we get to Michigan State versus Mississippi State, 133-point implied total. Uh, Both teams outside the top 200 in tempo. Uh, Thus, the old uh, low uh, score. Oh, yeah, by the way, they're both top 20 in defensive metrics as well. So, Uh, 133 point total here. Michigan State, a team that may or may not have really deserved to be in this tournament. But once Izzo's in, guys, y'all know the deal. I mean, it's there's a reason why it's January, February, Izzo, April, blah, just keeps going right there. So, uh, 10 guys checking in, Mike, for the Spartans and the big three are hitting 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is, in theory, uh, an awesome game to start the tournament with as far as fantasy purposes. 306th in tempo for Michigan State, 202nd in tempo, which is up from last year for Mississippi State. Two tough defenses and some offenses that are just okay. I don't know how much we want to get into this, man. I mean, implied total for Michigan State, 67 points on Ken Palm. Implied total for Mississippi State, 66 points. When you look at it from a Michigan State side, um, solid metrics, obviously, uh, for Mississippi State's defense. Um, They did get beat up a little bit uh, during conference play inside. They were actually 13th out of 14 teams in the SEC, uh, defending the two-point land, which was pretty interesting, considering they like to beat up and uh, get after you on that front court. 54% given up from the two-point land uh, by Mississippi State. Um, Also, they turned the ball over quite a bit. So Michigan State with an opportunity, you know, they're not a team that gets a lot of stocks, but a a steals boost here for some of the Michigan State guys and get their hands on thefts like someone like Tyson Walker. I mean, I say everyone's in play, and absolutely, because Tyson Walker has shown us that he can go for 40 fantasy points, right? Um, I don't want to play him. I'm probably going to have north of 40 lineups tomorrow. I, uh, I don't know that I'll play him. I might just play him on one just in case this game goes overtime. But that's about it. Um, you know, he's been he's been okay in the last two, but I kind of you know kind of throwing that out. Um, it's all hands on deck, you know, for March Madness here. Uh, a guy that we know has forty to forty five upside. It's just this spot here, one hundred and thirty three total. Like this doesn't this doesn't scream, uh, you know, play guys in this game for ceiling type uh, ability here. So Tyson Walker uh, for me probably a no go. AJ Hogard kind of in that same realm, like. These guys are probably priced 500 to 1,000 too much for this spot. Um, you need to get to 5x. So, like, you know, Hogard here needs to, you know, needs to drop over 30 um, and really get you close to, to 35, 36 if you really want a shot uh, to, to beat 5,000 teams. So, you know, both these guys are in the player pool. I, I don't know that I'll click the button on either one. Um, I don't know, Eric. Like, is there is like Malik Hall? He's the kind of the the third amigo here. Is this someone that's seventy one hundred? You have some interest in? In general, sure. Uh, in the context of this game, not really. Right. He's just kind of like a tertiary option. Um, you know, you you love the role. You mentioned uh, South Carolina getting you know beat up on the inside during conference play. Malik Hall has um, has taken. 250 shots from from inside uh inside t- two point land right so you know Mississippi State giving up that two pointer at 54 percent you know I mean it, it feels like he can you know get things working a little bit but in a in a game with you know a total this low it just it feels like there are 15 other teams out there that are going to have a little bit better options than than Malik Hall so Maybe his baseline's a little bit higher than you know what you might expect on any any given point, but I just don't know if the ceiling's there, and that's what you need to win twenty five k tomorrow. A lot of guys at this point with the rotations really shrunken down, 
there's a lot of guys that we can pick from on this slate that we know are going to play 30 minutes. So that's that's not necessarily yeah, – it's good to know that some of these guys are playing 30 minutes, but it's not necessarily, you know, oh, we have to target this person at this point because there's so many guys that we know are breaking that 30-minute mark. Mama Rocks, what it do, fellas? Yeah, Mama Rocks, good to see you do? now. Hope the squirrels and the goats and the chickens and the – you have an ostrich out there? Do you get ostrich eggs out there, Mama Rocks, on the farm? Let us know. Emu action? Yeah. Who knows? Jeff saying before that Indiana State would have been fun in the tournament. It would have been a lot more fun than watching Virginia. Uh, I know that. Oh, sheesh. But well, uh, they, they yeah. went like like 13 minutes of game time without scoring a point or something yesterday. <laughs> It was like it was like four minutes gone in the second half, and they didn't have they didn't have twenty yet. They had like fourteen yeah. points or something like that. Like it's that was what even was that? Would have been great to see our guy Kareem Abdul Jabbar over there, but he alas not wasn't meant to be in the big dance. Let's get to Mississippi State, as we mentioned before. Here, seven men checking in. Four guys going to hit, or four guys did hit thirty minutes last game. Again, so many playing thirty, Mike. Um, but again, this is the same. <laughs> this is the same game that we're talking about Michigan State being in. So, game environment kind of stinks a little bit. Yeah, it's not great. But you look at like their top dogs, and their top guard, uh, dogs are a little bit lower priced. So Josh Hubbard, I actually don't mind him uh, for tournament seventy two hundred. We know he has forty fantasy point upside. Um, absolutely has to make his shots, got to knock down his threes in order to get there because he doesn't do a lot uh, else as far as like rebounding, getting assists. Now he can get steals for you, um, but he's going to have to go nuclear uh, from three in order for him to really pay this off in a tournament. Um, maybe one shell I'll fire with him. Tolu Smith at 6,800 is awkwardly appealing at this price. Um, he's just been kind of so-so recently. All right, you, at five to six X at this price point, you really need him to – you had to bang out a 35 to a, a 40 to feel great in the tournament. Um, man, like maybe it's just on name recognition alone. And, you know, he's a first team all SEC player, but I would assume Chris Chance plays him 32 to 35 minutes. Um, that's really the only way he can get there. Uh, as far as the interior of Michigan state, like there's not a guy that's really going to stop him from doing what he wants. So I think he's interesting, probably my favorite price adjusted like tournament type play out of this entire game. I don't have much interest uh, outside of outside of him. Maybe, maybe Cam Matthews since he's seven hundred dollars cheaper. Eric, what are your thoughts on Cam Matthews? Definitely don't mind getting uh, a little bit of a discount going to six point five k um, for for Cam Matthews, right? I, I guess the you know the the issue with him is he's 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 really mo- more of like a boomer bust turny play, right? Like you know doesn't exactly shoot the ball a ton, but he can rack up the counting stats. He's you know he's he's got big stock upside. 14% shot rate is obviously pretty tough to swallow in the mid 6Ks, but you know, 27% rebound, nearly 20% assist. Then he's got 3% block and 4% steal rate. So, you know, if, if you're if you're putting a lot of bets out there, you know, he can he can be someone to consider in the pool overall, but not a huge priority. And the other name that we need to talk about, DJ Jeffries, uh, even more of a discount, uh, $200 less than Cam Matthews and you know, close to a thousand from some of the bigger names. You know, not a huge shot rate. He's actually carrying a 15%. It's a little bit better than Cam, but certainly not where you want to be. Uh, Big minutes, you know, counting stats. But, um, you know, all of this is kind of to a lesser degree than what we just covered with with Matthews, right? So both both in the pool, but there there are just there are so many better spots up and down this slate that you, you I'm not, I'm not going to find myself going there much. Don't really blame you. Uh, just a, an ugly total. Uh, let us know in the live chat if you're going to cross that game off altogether. Hop in there like Mama Rocks letting us know. There is no ostrich, but if... I knew it was an emu. That big old it, an emu would be on Dog. the way. Forklift Jeremy, good evening, fire. Drop that fire emoji in there like Jeremy did. Seven days oh. off again and couldn't come at a more perfect time. Good, sir. I am with you. The captain is with you as well. Off for a couple of days here at the end of the week. Unfortunately, our guy Eric the Blue uh, was not able to uh, finagle his way off on a couple of days here. But uh, that's okay. Be hitting We're that boss button on the brackets, right? Say, do, 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 do. No, just doing good. Exactly. Feel like Tolu can't get there. He spot Mama Rock saying about Tolu. It's going to be tough for him to get there. And Jeff 
Agreeing. Make sure you hop in that live chat. <laughs> yeah, Dylan saying not a chance is playing this crap game. <laughs> I know Brandon you're crossing it off. Yep. There's gonna be some games like that. We're gonna the first three are kind of weird. Yeah, how about Duquesne and BYU here? A 144 point total, so a little bit better there. Big time pace up for Duquesne playing eight guys and three guys hitting 30 minutes, Mike. Yeah, this one uh kind of ugly too. I mean, I have some interest in the Duquesne guards. I mean, you like the pace up spot. Uh, BYU kind of got beat up from three this year, at least in the Big 12 play. Now, Duquesne's not a Big 12 team, uh, but they got a couple of guys that can really fill it up, uh, Jimmy Clark and Day-Day Grant. So, you know, the, the BYU defense, 11th in defensive efficiency during Big 12 play. Now, uh, that's almost nearly 109 points per 100 possessions. Uh, Jimmy Clark at 7,700 and Day-Day Grant at 7,400. Like, these guys are contrarian tourney type options. I mean, Clark has the ability to go for 40 Day Day Grant has the ability to go for 35 40. So these dudes, they, they shoot the ball a ton. Like they're the only guys that shoot the ball for this team, basically. So Jimmy Clark's going to take 15 to 20 attempts. Uh, you're going to see Day Day Grant take 12 to 15 attempts. Um, you know, they're going to get to the free throw line a few times. They have the ball in their hands a ton. Uh, Day Day Grant, uh, you know, can get you some assists and steals. Uh, Jimmy Clark can rebound, uh, you know, decently for a guard. So, you know, outside of like tournament options, uh, that's really all I have for them. If you want to get cute, you can go down to 3,100 um, and play Jacob Nikas. He is 3,100. Um, recently getting a bit more run, especially in this A-10 tournament, last two games. Um, he's 3,100, and he put up a 15 and a 13. Uh, if you feel like the, those – and those two games, if you watch them, those were knocked out. It was St. Bonaventure, and it was VCU. I mean, those games were disgusting, absolutely ugly game totals. Um, you feel like in this one, especially if it starts to you know get out of hand, he gets a little more run off the bench here. He's got six to seven X upside. Um, so, you know, just kind of an interesting like secondary type value play that uh, you may be cute with. Um, I don't know if you think the game stays close. I don't know that you want to play, play him as a game stack because he's probably not doing the heavy lifting for this team. Um, but if you're trying to get like a one off and really save a bunch of salary and pay up for you know three studs, I think he's interesting. But that's about it from this side. Eric, anything for you? Yeah, this this side's kind of tricky, right? Like, um, you know, you can you can take a look at Drame, um, you know, a, a another option that um, is is sitting fairly reasonably priced, right? Five five point five k, so you know, part of that mid tier that I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, the the minutes have been a little bit more secure lately, right? So you you definitely like to see that. You know he's he's only got a sixteen percent shot rate, but he he rebounds like a like a beast out there. Thirty percent rebound rate. You know if if things break white, you know maybe he can he can kind of back into a double double, and you feel pretty good about that at this five point five k price tag. He uh he shoots forty five percent from from downtown, so obviously that looks very appealing. The issue is he he doesn't take a ton of threes. He's taken fifty five on the season, but. You know, we we kind of talked about this when we were breaking down the brackets in the preceding couple of days. This might be one of those spots where you know Duquesne realizes that they they need to you know increase the value of their possessions. Maybe they start shooting the ball from from downtown a little bit more often. And you know, if if, if Drame is the uh, the one that's pulling the trigger, he doesn't have to see many of them go through to pay off five. Oh, that's all they're going to see from the BYU side. BYU's just all they do is shoot threes. I, I mean, they're exactly their metrics they're are crazy. Pay, like keep pace, right? Like yes, yeah, second in the country in three point rate. So all they're going to do is see guys taking threes. Uh, you got to think that they're going to fire off some threes. So I think yeah, you can't kind of you're a, not kind feeling of good side. about layups when when the team you're facing is just raining in threes. You know. Well, what about BYU, Eric? Um, there's really only one guy, right? That's that's getting those consistent minutes. Uh, just cross them off, Eric. Cross well, the side off. <laughs> <laughs> cross it I off mean, all together, uh, right? Like I don't. I usually BYU, do, man. I mean, what do you think, Eric? Is anybody, anybody there? Anybody, Eric? Yeah. So look, uh, Duquesne has played solid defense all year long, right? Like you know, on, on offense, they, they did the, they did turn the ball over at a pretty high clip this year, 17% overall for me, really the only name that kind of sticks out here is, is Dalen Hall, 6.4 K. Um, you know, the, the, the thing with him is that he, he's routinely getting across 30 minutes. So you, you definitely like the fact that he's on the court as much as he is, um, you know, 18% usage and only 16% shot rate. So, 
nothing to write home about there, but you do mm-hmm. like his his twenty eight percent assist rate, right? If if there are dimes to be had, he is the one dishing them out. He can chip in a couple of steals here and there. Shoots just north of the Heinrich line at thirty six percent on one hundred and forty two three point attempts. So, you know, th- this is one of those spots we we always say like just a little bit cheaper, and we feel better about a guy. I th- I think it's right there for for Dahlin, right? Like maybe like six point one k. I would feel kind of okay about it, but. You know, ultimately, like I just I don't know that we need to like really go out of our way to make a justification for one of these fringe players yeah. on on a. Just when they play state. a thousand guys. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. think I think we should just listen to Mike and just cross it off. I mean, <laughs> there you go. Talk about that for me. Hall. Watch Dallin Hall. The, the he's getting to Hall. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he'll be on the optimal probably. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us on One and Done. Make sure you hit all those like and subscribe buttons, notification bells, so you don't miss anything that we're doing here on YouTube. Follow us on uh, Twitter, X, Elon Toho, whatever you want to call it, at One and Done CBB, all spelled out, at Get Green Screens as well on Twitter and then at uh, on TikTok as well. So hit all those follow buttons so you don't miss what we're doing as we get to Akron and Creighton. Mike's pick to win the whole. Dang. You took the dang. zips? <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh that'd be pretty ballsy. Bull not the crate in there. <laughs> um, we're not gonna start with Mike's pick. We will start with the zips though, Mike, playing nine guys here, and it's really just two guys getting monster minutes, but uh man, this is you don't really like the matchup here. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the matchup. I mean, Enrique Freeman at 8,400 for, like, his upside is uh, certainly appealing. Um, I know he's probably going to pop in projections, but, like, uh, there's a guy named Ryan Kalkbrenner on the other side. You heard um, of him? Yeah, yeah he's, he's pretty good team. defensively. So, yeah. you know, Enrique Freeman, the guy that in the MAC can just, like, kind of do whatever he wants, that's that's. I don't think that's going to be the case here. I think that's obviously why you see the Akron total at 64. But one thing you do know about Enrique Freeman is that he's going to play, uh, as long as he's not in foul trouble, a pile of minutes. He's a monster on the glass. Um, so Colbert is going to have to you know, body him up there to keep him off the glass. A guy that certainly could go uh, for 40-plus. I mean, we saw 65 against Ohio. Like, the dude is just insane. Um, super motor there. Uh, I have a – gosh – it's just a lot of plays in the slate that it's like hard to be like, I want to play Enrique Freeman at 8,400 against Ryan Kalkbrenner. <laughs> um, it doesn't, it doesn't make a ton of sense. I feel like he's probably going to kind of pop off when we do some projections. Um, but Enrique Freeman, like he's in the player pool. He has to be same with Ali Ali. Um, now obviously you say $2,300 getting to Ali Ali. Uh, he was at Akron a couple of years ago, transferred last year to Butler. Didn't really work out. Had some injuries last year, transfers back to Akron. If he had just stayed with Akron last year, they would have been hell. Um, but, you know, a guy that routinely puts up 30 fantasy points, I mean, a high usage rate, you know, decent rebound and, and assist rate, but he doesn't really get any stocks free. And so I'm trying to get to 5-6-X. So I feel better about Freeman in tournaments than I do Ali Ali, um, especially at a 64 implied total. Greg Tribble is 4,400. He's a guy that plays monster minutes here. Uh, for them, I mean, when we say monster, it's like Ali Ali, Freeman, and, and then a huge drop off. So, you know, he's getting into the 30s now. Um, the rates aren't great. I mean, 19 usage rate, 13% shot rate. She's 41% from three, but it doesn't take a lot of them because Ali Ali and Enrique Freeman take so many shots. Uh, he's in the value player pool for me, just more of a secondary piece. Um, Eric, is anyone on the side, man? Like, it, uh, it feels kind of weird I, in, in the Creighton side. Uh, obviously, you know what's going on here. Yeah, you, you mentioned Freeman and, and Ollie, like soaking up all the minutes, soaking up all the the usage, right? So we're we're definitely looking at kind of ancillary pieces here. You know, if if you if you want to look at kind of like some secondary value, Sammy Hunter's there at four point three k. What he has working in his favor is that he's taken a hundred and sixty two three point attempts on the season, shooting just past the Heinrich line on that. So. Whenever, whenever they need to shoot from from range, it seems like he's getting his number called a fair amount. You, you mentioned that cliff in minutes, right? Like Hunter is is definitely a victim of that, right? You know, he's kind of in the twenty to thirty range, but a lot of volatility on a game in and game out basis in terms of just how much he's on the court. Um, the usage rate isn't where you want it to be. 
you know, shot is kind of borderline at 20%, doesn't really contribute much on the, the counting stat side. So, you know, for me, like, as, as you're looking at the landscape of all these builds that you put into the various tournaments you're playing tomorrow, if you're just overexposed to, like, a short list of value guys, I think you can rotate Hunter <laughs> in and replace on some of those, right? But ultimately, like... Freeman and Ollie, like they just they sop up so much of the usage and the in the the run here that it's it's hard to make a defendable case for for anyone else, even at a reasonable price tag like four point three k. Yeah, twenty eight enough. <laughs> like, sorry, yeah. this is not twenty two to thirty two minutes. That's a huge gap in variation yeah. there. Like, how do you, right? It's not, it's not like it's twenty. Take some chances at thirty two. It's not like it's like twenty six to twenty eight, and it's like okay, kind of no. 22 to 32 minutes flexion back and forth. Like it's hard to <laughs> even justify that there. Although, like you said, Eric, he does get the threes up. How about the blue Jays, Mike, four guys. Uh, this is just an extremely talented team as obviously you think very highly of them, but these are guys that just. God, look at the price to, tags, Jay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like we're paying up to, yeah. get to this side for any of these players that we know them that we trust. I should say, um, you're paying Yeesh. top dollar. Yeah, top dollar, which is really annoying. <laughs> uh, but it makes sense, right? Like, they play 40 minutes, all three of the big three, basically. And, and hell, Stephen Ashford gets, you know, gets a pile of minutes, too. So, uh, the fact that they have a big four kind of eating at each other at these price points, Ryan Kalkbrenner, uh, probably the – I would say probably the most interesting from a tournament perspective. Um, this is an Acker team that's really shut down the three ball this year. I mean uh, – where you can really hurt them, oddly enough, is actually inside and on the offensive glass, even though Freeman gets like 15 to 20 rebounds. Um, there's still more rebounds to be had. <laughs> they don't have any other guys that actually are solid rebounders. Um, so unless he's doing well and if he's not, if he's in foul trouble, like this just spells like a complete blowout here. Uh, but Cockrenner at 9,200, you know, obviously a guy that can go for 45, 50. All these guys can go for 45, 50. Shireman at 9,500. Uh, Trey Alexander at 8,500. I mean, it's kind of like pick your poison most of the time when you play this team. You never stack these guys together um, because of the price tags, but you can typically – and it's hard to, like, build the rest of your lineup if you play two of these guys. Um, so, yeah, I guess for me, I, it's it's just more like spin the wheel on these uh, on these three top dogs, Trey Alexander, Baylor Shireman, Ryan Kalkbrenner, Eric. Um, do you have a preference on, on any of these guys and – What's your thoughts on Steven Ashworth just sitting there at like the, the major discount uh, from these guys? Yeah, it's a it's a weird spot for the the top guys. Um, you know, we 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 talked about Devries being the price king on the slate. Shireman and Cockbrenner are, are right up there with him. So, you know, spending up in that way in a game that has some blowout potential always feels a little uncomfortable. Um, so you know, all three of them will be in the pool. I I guess I would err on the side of Cockbrenner. Um, but not, you know, not the the biggest of priorities for me. You, you mentioned Ashworth, uh, another way to get into this game, you know, sub 7K. So don't mind the price tag necessarily. Um, you know, he's he's always sneaky in a tournament context. It's just like we, the next time that we get him right will be the first time that we get him right all year, right? Like he's got 30 plus point upside. Um, you know, he hasn't shot the ball well in the in the last handful of games and, has you know gotten into that you know north of north of 30 mark so you know maybe there's you know some uh some variance kind of breaking back in his way where we, you know he sees a few more go through but i mean for me like ashworth is really no more than like another one of these kind of secondary mid-tier options and i just i don't know if he if he really gets to the ceiling that you're looking for in this type of game environment you know I do know, and I think that it's going to come down to picking which one of these top three guys that we want to go with and rotating them in and out of your lineups and just picking one and, and then going from there. Uh, I'd like to ask you, if you're hanging out with us live, drop in the live chat, which one would you like to start your lineups with, Cogbrenner, Sharman, or Alexander? Or if you don't want to play any of those guys, let us know too. But I feel like you're going to have to play one of those because, like you know, again, we've seen Sharman go for over 60 within the last five. Cogbrenners hit 50 and 40 and 47. And then Trey Alexander getting 40 uh, three times in a row in the, within the last five. 
Um, right? <laughs> it feels weird yeah, not so, to play one of them because that's all so we've been doing. <laughs> yeah, so let's get a poll up. We'll get a poll up. And if you're hanging out with us live, make sure you vote in that poll on YouTube. If you're watching over on Twitter or somewhere else, uh, get over to YouTube. Uh, type in Green Screens Media. Our channel will pop up. Hit that subscribe button and then hit the live video and vote in our poll. Which one would you like to play, Carl Brenner, Charmin, or Alexander? And while you're over there, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, we're three away from 850. It feels like two weeks ago we were celebrating uh, breaking 800, and now we are three away from 850. So if you, let's get there tonight. Let us know if you hit that subscribe button if you're brand new. Uh, let us know in the chat. Uh, just drop fire emojis in the chat. Yeah, whatever you want to do. Just drop and say what's up. We'll flash it up on the screen for sure. And Jeff saying that Creighton is on the high-end wheel. Yeah, spin that wheel with the Creighton Blue Jays. That high-end spin, if you will. Um, yeah, thanks for hopping in there, Jeff. I always appreciate seeing you in the chat. Here we go. Now, let's get into Arizona. Why do I love Arizona so much? It's because I, I love pain. I, I feel like that's, that's just, I can't help it. But that's my pick to win the whole thing. I'm going back to back. Yes, they yes they burned me last year, and I'm sticking with it. Sticking with the Wildcats. A 162 point implied total here, but a 20 point spread. Long Beach State is the 20 point dog in this one. Let's start there, Mike, with Long Beach State. Nine guys checking in. Uh, both of them get up and down. Both these teams are top 30 in tempo, so you know there's going to be a, just a boatload of possessions. So um, here we go, uh, 162. Okay, so we've got the over on the, on the screen here. We've got over under 150. But it's 162 in this jaunt, boys and girls, 162. Let's start with Long Beach State. It's, it's, it's basically five guys, like – playing all the minutes. They're going to rotate a couple of guys in before TV timeouts and things like that, Mike, but it's basically five guys playing all the minutes. Yeah, basically. And um, this is going to be uh, the game I'm most forward uh, watching just from a pay. Like it's going to be, I mean, maybe 10 seconds per possession. <laughs> like this guys are going to be flying up and down the court. I mean, it'll be, you know, Long Beach State. And they're also playing with a, uh, you know, lame duck coach here. So, which his interview today was pretty hilarious. Uh, these guys are going to be free, relaxed. Like, it's absolutely easy. I mean, with them, like Arizona is obviously tough defensively per possession, but they play so damn fast that they give up fantasy points. So the Traore brothers from uh, from Long Beach State, ooh, man, 7,500 and 7,000. So Abubakar is 7,500. I mean, he's a, he's a double-double threat. Obviously, we're going to have to deal with Balo here and then a very tough Keyshawn Johnson. Uh, I may mess around with them. I, if this game stays close, like stays within 10 going down the last five, you know, five, six minutes, you have to feel good about what one of these two can do. I don't, I don't want to play both together. Um, but obviously, uh, Abubakar here at 7,500 carrying a little bit higher price tag than Lucina. So I've got some interest in Lucina as well at 7K. I mean, both guys just phenomenal rebounders. Um, they could rack up fantasy points in a hurry. So I'm not I'm not shy to uh, to, to play these guys, especially when they're playing third. Now we'll see about foul trouble. Um, both guys double double threads. Both guys can uh, you know get a couple of assists. Both guys can block some shots, rack up some stocks. Just they shoot the ball a ton. I mean, I kind of like it. The only thing I don't like is who they're playing against, right? And that's kind of the thing. So uh, the guy that I'm really targeting is going to be the guard here, Marcus Tashonis. Uh, he's 6300 only got a $300 bump. He is way too cheap. Um, he's pretty close to, if it wasn't this 20-point spread, that's kind of what's keeping him out of, like, me calling him a core-type play. He's going to play high 30s minutes. He's going to take 15 to 20 shots. He's got a high assist rate. He played in the Pac-12 um, with Washington um, a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, he's 10th in the country in shot rate. <laughs> Top 10 in the country in shot rate. And he's got a 21% assist rate. It's just 6,300 in this type of environment and pace. Like, I don't care if he turns the ball over five times. If you're going to give him 20 extra possessions, then he, you know, uh, I just, I love it. Uh, 6,300. 
I am nervous about the uh, potential blowout here, but man, all three of these guys, honestly, in my GPP player pool, for sure. I don't know that I'll, I might stack them in maybe one or two out of my 40 or 50 lineups um, just to see if we can get a close game and maybe run it back with somebody on the Arizona side. But I think priority for me is to play to show us and then, uh, look to maybe mix and match some, some priorities in here. I mean, we can't act surprised if this game somehow ends up close. Like, with the momentum, like, the, just the free spirit that this team seems to be right. playing with. Like, I don't think – nobody's going to be surprised, thanks to the the graphics guys for getting the total fix there on the graphic. It is now updated. Oh. 162, awesome. of course, is the over-under there. And, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise you if this game was close at least – you know, close for a lot for a lot longer than than some people think it would be. Yeah, I mean, this year uh, I know that one of great seasons for Michigan and USC, but uh, Long Beach beat both of those teams. So it's not like they haven't played yeah. quality, you know, quality type uh, of players that we play on DFS on a regular basis. Um, but obviously, Michigan and USC, uh, yeah. those seasons went down the drain. But I wouldn't be surprised the game stayed a little bit tighter. Eric, any, before we move to Arizona, anybody on this side for you? I mean, we can talk about AJ George as a sort of secondary value piece, right? Um, you know, five point one k is is a little bit more than we typically uh, spend on on what we would categorize as value. the The thing with George is he's he's been in and out of the starting lineup, right? So, um, you know, getting mixed in, and this is one of the nights where he gets a little bit more run. Um, you know, a, a game where um, you know they're they're getting paced up. You know, could could have a good, pretty good path to paying that off, right? He's, you know, m- most most of the games, regardless of whether or not he's starting, he's at, he's out there for a good good number of minutes. His rates are you know pretty solid, especially considering you know this this pace up spot. You know, secondary value is is really the way that I would I would think about it. But you know, if if you're looking for you know a, a run back to an Arizona player. You could you could make a case for George at at five point one k. What about Arizona, Eric? All five starters playing twenty eight plus minutes. The the thing for me in this matchup and why it could get out of hand quick is Beach can't shoot the three, and they can't defend the three man. So uh, obviously those two things when you add it up uh, equals a problemo when you play uh, Arizona. Yeah, definitely makes for a tough spot, right? Obviously, you you like the story, you like the momentum that they have coming in, but uh, Arizona is many of the finest analysts in the world championship pick, right? Like this is a solid team. Um, you know, they're they're top twenty five in three point percentage made. So you you mentioned that kind of leading in Jay, and and don't forget that you know Beach is giving up uh, an assist rate that's. 344th in the country. So a lot of dimes available on the table for the Wildcats. As is always the case, the conversation with Arizona starts with our boy, Caleb Love. Caleb Love, who's on a jersey, you can win by entering the one and done bracket challenge. But I digress. Why uh, is it some shivers down my spine just by saying his name? Somebody saying his name. Because he played just... 35 fantasy points in the last three games. That's why. <laughs> Total combined. Yeah. Like, it's what is combined. happening? Combined. And because of that, he comes in at 7.6K. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a literally trap. just baiting you into clicking his name. It's a trap. And I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably going to get ensnared. I'm I'll probably going to click too. the button, I'll right? Do it. Um, the, the price is, is never this low. He's such a good tourney option. It is terrifying, which is kind of the theme around Arizona broadly, more broadly, right? Mike and I were talking about this after one of the shows yesterday. If, if you're, if you're talking about one of those survivor formats, Caleb Love might be one of the candidates, one of the few candidates who could see his price tag go up fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars <laughs> over the course of the first couple of games. So might be an interesting play in that format in particular, I definitely have interest in terms of uh, your traditional GPPs as well. Uh, moving on, a, another player that um, can can fill it up a fair amount himself. Pele Larson, six point eight K. You know, shoots forty three percent from from three, but only taking ninety three attempts on the season. Um, he does offer a twenty percent assist rate, so you know, definitely don't don't mind that at all. He's he's also getting. You know the uh, the the bump from the matchup, right? The threes and assists that are going to be boosted really for all of these guards. 
the the price feels kind of gross especially from like an upside standpoint you just don't really see him getting to the the ceiling he needs to to pay off a nearly 7k price tag but when your team totals 91 like everyone that is playing heavy minutes is is going to be at least worthy of of a consideration right so if that ceiling game were to come it is in this type of environment um it's just it's so hard to pay for me 6.8k when Caleb Love is sitting up there for a couple hundred dollars more. Um, the last guard that is also getting the uh, the benefit of that assist and three point bump is Kylan Boswell, five point eight k. Like you know, I'd I'd much rather take that thousand dollar savings off of Pele Larson and go down to Boswell shooting thirty nine percent from downtown. He's taken a hundred and fifty eight three point attempts. So. You like that he is pulling the trigger a little bit more often. I like that. Gives you the same 20% assist rate too, right? So it gets that boost on the against the 344th ranked team in the country at assist rate. So guards are the ones that are really jumping out for me. But Mike, this uh this team's got a got a couple of pretty solid big men that we need to talk about as well. Yeah, and they're gonna go up against some solid big men. I can't that's why I'm, oh, this is gonna be so I wish Long Beach could shoot threes, but then they wouldn't be a 15 uh seed. So uh Key yeah. Johnson at 6600. Um, you know, he's starting to play, you know, flashing 30 plus minutes. So I think he's definitely interesting. A guy that can shoot the three ball as well. So if you combine that with the toughness and him getting rebounds and also his stock ability, I think Key Johnson is definitely interesting. Omar Ballo at 8500. I think I'm with you, Eric. Like, I'm more interested in these guards because, like you said, mm -hmm. Beach can't shoot the three, which means long rebounds, and they can't defend the three, which means you want guys that shoot threes against them, and they also give up a ton of assists, so you need playmakers around them. So, for me, Balo's in the player pool always, but probably always. fifth. Out of, I mean, when I look at it, like, I, I want some love, you know. Uh, maybe you want some, some love, Mike? Yeah, I want some love. <laughs> you also have uh, KJ uh, Lewis and, and Jaden Bradley also, which could kind of take away. That's that's also kind of scary for these guards. You're probably you might only going to get 20 minutes from each of those guys, which means that we might not see 30 minutes from Boswell. We might not see you know 38 minutes from Caleb Love if this game gets out of hand. So we got to be careful here with these these 215 and these 116 matchups. They get out of hand. They know they have a game in two days. Uh, against a, typically a much tougher opponent. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we got to be careful here, but, God, if this game stays close, like, <laughs> it's so sneaky to just be able to smash, like, two guys on this Arizona side and get the run back on the other side. No doubt about it. It's going to be – It's this isn't – it's a 16-game slate, broskies and broskets. Like, something's going to – something's got to give. And we're looking for those answers right now, of course. Make sure you hop in that live chat. Let us know what you think about this slate and what you are going to be doing as we break all these games down. Hop in that poll. Which one of the Creighton uh, three are you going to go with? We got anybody in there in there yet, Eric? Ooh, let's see what the live update is. Live updates on the poll here. Right now, we have Baylor Shireman leading the way, 60% of responses. Uh, everyone else is voting Cockbrenner and an Alexander with uh, w sitting there waiting for his, his first Bill vote. Goose show him a little bit of love. Wow. All right. Good deal. Thanks for those of you that have hopped in there. Let's keep that rolling. Let us know which one of the Creighton guys, the Creighton Big Three, you're going to play. Uh, this is uh, – I don't <laughs> – I don't like this one. Wagner and North <laughs> Carolina. Um, oh, just Yikes. do we have to? I guess we have to. Mike. Uh, you said game by game. I did. <laughs> I, 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 we will deliver it to. Uh, but when, when a team has a 54 point implied total, <laughs> even when you've got three guys uh, that play basically every second, uh, <laughs> they're going up against the top 10 defense. And uh, you like the pizza? Know, man. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. There you so go. That's my guy. I always find it. Yeah. Hey, this is Wagner, Mike. This could get ugly. Um, I know me and me and you had the conversation before we came out about Javier Esqueda. I'm interested. I wish I could know right now if people are actually going to play him at 4,300 because honestly, he should be priced at 5,200, 50, 50, 5,300. So Esqueda at 4,300, we smashed him um, a couple of slates ago uh, at 3K. I think it was 3,900. He really delivered. He delivered back-to-back 26s. 
Uh, now, this is a much tougher matchup <laughs> going against these North Carolina. He's got to defend these guys, too. So uh, good luck. This, uh, these guys are going to get run around. They only got like seven guys that can play here. So I do have interest in this get um, He is a way to obviously save salary. Doesn't shoot the ball a ton, but he has a high assist rate. I don't foresee him getting eight assists against North Carolina. Um, you know, typically when you see ceilings, it's a high assist and high steals and knocks down a couple of threes. But these guys are going to be on the floor a ton. Melvin Council at 6,800. I mean, he flashed 40 the last uh, in the play-in game, but uh, this isn't the play-in game against Howard. <laughs> this is North Carolina. So, <laughs> yeah, I think really I'm, I'm, I'm just more interested in Esqueda than anything else as like a – I mean, I'll call, I'll call him a primary value play. He's playing 40 minutes. Like, yeah, Eric, man, like on this North Carolina yeah. side, like you, you're probably not going to get anybody playing 40 minutes. So, like, <laughs> what, no, what are your thoughts on in, these guys? But not in 43 either. And, Eric, you were saying pre-show too. Like, show me more guys that are playing 40 minutes at 4,300 with this guy, right? So, anyways, yeah, get to. I'll let you get to North Carolina, though. We're not going to we're not going to ask you any more of. You don't have to do a deep dive into Wagner here, my guy. Let's <laughs> let's, let's hit the Tar Heels. Yeah, we we had to we had to at least cruise through the Wagner side because we'd been riding that Esqueda train recently. But uh, you know, really the the players of note for for this matchup are on the the UNC side. Um, you know, Wagner is the second slowest team in the country. They defend the three ball pretty well, but um, you know, play the third worst strength of schedule. Um, so, you know, hard to say how much of that was influenced by their defense as opposed to influenced by their opponents. Um, you know, starting off with the, the UNC side, as we often do, got to spend a little time talking about RJ Davis here. Uh, 8.3K, just an absolute beast at the, you know, at, at this price tag. The price has come down just a little bit. So, you know, take the savings where you can. How long will they need to play him? You know, kind of kind of hard to say in a game where, they're favored by 22 points. Uh, you know, you can say a lot of the same about Armando Baycott, right? 8.2K, just another absolute smash spot. Uh, Wagner can't stop a nosebleed, right? They're, they're definitely not slowing down Armando Baycott on the inside. You know, the the real concern is whether or not this this gets out of out of hand quickly, and I think it it probably will, right? So, you know, both of these both of these players are are tremendous players of their own right. Um, but in terms of, you know, plays in this context might not be the the best spot to fire him up. And Jay, like, I don't know, man, I don't know that I'll get to, it just feels like these guys get up so big and then you're going to get Withers out here. You're going to get Trimble out here. You're going to get Jalen Washington for, you know, 15 minutes. Yeah. Like why? I mean, I just I don't know how Wagner be, even gets, keeps it close. So I think North Carolina is, they're going to make a, a point. They're going to make, this is a statement that they're going to, that they're going to make in this one. I don't think it's going to be very close at all. Did, did Harrison Ingram or Cormac Ryan or any of those other North Carolina mm, guys like? Not really, man. I mean, Ingram's kind of interesting, like, but the, the, the game has to stay close. This game doesn't have a chance to stay close for me. It's going to be a 30, 30 point blowout. Um, yeah. Wagner's just way overmatched, undermanned, too. So, you know, it might be nice if you play North Carolina guys, you're going to see them uh, with fire emojis in the first half. <laughs> um, and then you probably will see them score three fantasy points after that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, not for me, man. I'm more excited in this next game we're about to talk about. No doubt about it. Uh, let's get to it. Morehead State in Illinois. Scott, TSU4 with the casual flex in the in the live chat. Hey, there. little humble brag, my uh, guy. Anyone else in the king of the bracket tomorrow? Yeah. If so, Scott's what's good play, man. Scott, thanks for yeah, joining us. Yeah, man. We, we really appreciate you hanging out with us. Thanks for doing that and for hopping in the live chat. And good luck. In the old KOB, uh, let come back and let us know how you do, Scott. We appreciate you for sure. Morehead State in Illinois, a game that Mike is looking forward to, a game that we're all looking forward to uh, a little bit more in terms of playable guys in this one. You might think you might be thinking, "Oh, Morehead State, uh, let's just move on." There's Morehead State. We can't. No, no, no. Not so fast, Not my so friend. Fast. Like, there's some guys, right, that we need to, that we uh, have to consider playing on this Morehead State side. Uh, just hearing the name Morehead State takes me back to the very first slate um, where I just blew it all um, <laughs> by not playing Minix and Lathan together, and here we are. Uh, they're projecting very well here in this spot against Illinois, who doesn't play 
Uh, I know, I know Scott has the old, uh, Illinois, <laughs> Illinois Jersey in his, uh, in his avatar there, but, uh, he knows very well that Illinois hadn't played very good defense this year. Um, man, like ninth in defense efficiency and during big 10 play gave up 39% from three more heads, nearly top 100 in the country, uh, from three. So you love the pace up spot for more head state. Riley Minix is 8,400. I mean, an awesome, awesome player. The price tag, though, kind of yucky for me, um, but he's got an inside-outside game. Uh, feels like he can really hurt them in some different areas. Um, has 40-plus fantasy upside. I'm just more excited about what these other what these guards can do. Um, Khalil Thomas sits here at 6K. I mean, he's flashed 30 to 40 fantasy point upside. These guys play big minutes. Now, he has a smaller role. Um, really, he's just shooting – chucks up threes. I mean, shooting 43% on the air, taking 208 attempts. So Khalil Thomas is okay. Um, I am I'm more in love with the uh, the two cheaper guys, which is Drew Thelwell at 5900. Now he doesn't shoot the ball a ton, only an 18 percent shot rate, uh, but a 30 percent assist rate, a two percent steal rate, and 34 percent from three. So I absolutely like Drew Thelwell here as that like lower mid tier type play. Uh, Jordan Lathan, uh, it's a, I feel like this is a, a really good spot for him. Uh, I mean, he's got a huge role in this team. He's probably my favorite price adjusted play. Really, you can kind of just spin the wheel on Thomas Dovell and Lathan. I feel like one of these guys is going to have a pretty good game. A 29% usage rate, 20% combined rebounding rate, a 16% assist rate, shooting 38% from three. Um, I don't know that you, I, I feel like on the optimal lineup when we look at it, so one of these cats from Moorhead State is going to be on it. Whether I mean, you can even include Minix in this list. I feel like one of the, we saw them play Bama earlier in the year when they were 3K, both um, Lathan and Minix were 3K. They got blown out, but they still put up in a pace up spot a ton of fantasy points. So uh, back then it was 10 and 11 and 12X. You know, this time we're trying to get to 5 and 6X to win a tournament. So I definitely think Lathan, um, Bellwell, Thomas, like all these guys, the fact that these guys got into the tournament is pretty awesome. Uh, having lost Mark Freeman before the season started, he was the OVC player of the year. So uh eric anybody else on this uh on this morehead state side that you're interested in yeah there's a there's some interesting value that we need to talk about here eddie ricks uh 4.5k at the forward spot uh doesn't start for them right but he's he's a he's a super interesting value piece because he's he's kind of the you know kind of the six man role that that he plays here you know getting high 20s minutes pretty consider pretty consistently during conference play, you know, 18% shot rate, 19% rebound rate, blocks pretty well, 4% there. He can chip in a couple of shots from downtown, 58 attempts from three at about 31%. So, you know, the, the thing here is is basically if anyone in this starting lineup gets into foul trouble, you know, it could push Ricks into a place where he's playing 30-plus minutes. He's flashed north of 20 points several times, uh, you know, in, in his recent game log, but also throughout the season, just – he he feels like the the type of value that has so many different ways, not only to you know to get there and cover his price tag, but to potentially be you know well beyond that five x multiple that we're needing to if if things break right. So definitely need to show a little love to Eddie Ricks before we move off this side. No doubt about it. Show love to Eddie Ricks, like Scott showed us in the live chat. We appreciate your kind words, Scott. My definitely, guy. and we appreciate your time. Uh, as always, and forklift Jeremy saying, I nailed it in the statement game for your heels. Jeremy, we they better hope so. Because if, if they <laughs> fall flat, they better hope so. And, and then Michigan okay. State's right there. <laughs> yes, just oh, waiting. Man, can't wait. Can't wait. Can't not wait. Anything else? Uh, we got Eddie Ricks there. Illinois, let's get to Illinois here. Eric, I'm gonna stay with you. Uh, the big three playing max minutes is really all we need to know, I think. Yeah, that's that's been the story with us attacking this this Illini side all season long. Uh, looking at their matchup, you know, Moorhead is is a very good team defensively, but in the context of the Ohio Valley, and we all know that Illinois on the offensive side is just on a different level this year, right? So, you know, Moorhead is a team that will you know turn the ball over as well, so. You know, stocks are, are available for the Illini. The, the guys that poke it out get a little bit of a boost there. Um, I mean, the, the name that I feel like we, we have to start with <laughs> with Illinois is Terrence Shannon coming in exactly. at 9.3K. Um, you know, are, are there, I don't know, three, five guys better than him in the entire country, right? Just, 
Uh, absolutely phenomenal season for him. Huge shot rate. Illinois could easily go, you know, beyond this 82 implied total for the team. The the problem with him is is really the the price, right? So I I think you can justify it, right? There's a world where you, you can definitely see him paying off 9.3k. He's he's definitely done it before. You worry about the blowout potential at at, at that price tag, but I mean, if if people are are going to be kind of scared off of Terrence Shannon because of the number that he's carrying and the you know the the lopsided total in this game, you know, might be an interesting way to create a little bit of leverage in a tournament context. So, you know, and an under-owned Terran Shannon is always something that will pique my interest. Mike, what about the the two remaining legs of the uh, of the big three <laughs> stool here for the Eli and I? Uh, Mike is the mask AK. Sounds like a tournament smash to me. <laughs> um <laughs> I, no, I don't I just, oof, it's right there. I mean <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if Terrence Shannon just didn't take 5 million shots, right? Uh, Damask would be 9,500. So uh, here we are. Uh, I'll try to squeeze him in on the maybe one or two of my you know, 40 to 50 lineups. I don't know. It doesn't It doesn't feel necessary because then I feel like I'm sacrificing, uh, you know, Terrence Shannon who could go for a 50 bomb. Uh, they're not going to be able to stop him if this game stays close, Terrence Shannon. So I'm with you, Eric. Like, if he's not going to be played, like he's one of the better spend up options. The mask is always interesting, but it's like in the context of, you know, when we play these conference slates, it's like, you know, you can pivot down for 8,000. Well, there's like a million guys on this slate. So do you really need to, do you really need to be uh, spinning down and, and pivoting from Terrence Shannon to go to an 8K guy when there's a bunch of six and 7K guys that can go for 40 or 50? That's kind of my problem with the mask and Coleman Hawkins. Also my problem with Coleman Hawkins is he owes me uh, about, I don't know, like ten entries in the in the king of the bracket. Personally, uh, let me hold on. Let me do. Okay, we don't have time to do this, but it, it, it's a lot of money that that <laughs> Coleman Hawkins owes me over the last like three weeks. So, uh, you know, Ty Rogers also has been phenomenal, but I, like he's a guy that can grab. It's crazy. Like he's that's the problem. Coleman Hawkins won't get ten rebounds because Ty Rogers gets ten rebounds every game from the point guard position. So, uh, you have to mention him uh, always when you play Illinois. Uh, I don't know that I really want to get to him because I feel like there's just better 6K guys um, that can go off in that spot that actually shoot the ball. Uh, but next year, Ty Rogers will be a lot of fun. But that that's really it, Jay. Like the big three, I mean, it just is what it is. But, yeah, Coleman Hawkins has really hurt my heart. Same with Kevin it all, Love. It all feels annoying. Uh, and as an Illini fan, Jeff is saying that the defense is annoying as well. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I could get the <laughs> Shannon at 9.3, guys. Like, that's, that's tough. I, I love me some Terrence Shannon, but yeah, but 9.3, I don't know about it. It's a hell of a game to stack if you can get this know. thing to stay close on both yeah. sides. You can play two from Moorhead. I mean, you could heavy stack this thing at 3-2 or – yeah, you could actually do it. Um, but, yeah. So, See, we're giving you games close. to cross off earlier in there. We're giving you games to consider double stack, big-time stacks – as well it's all about how you approach it you're gonna have to beat a lot of teams to get this bread tomorrow so you know mixing it up a little bit is not too shabby of an idea hop in the live chat like scott and jeremy and jeff have and uh as we get on to this ugly game i i hope that oregon can get through this ugly game in the tournament because i would love to watch those oregon guards against creighton's guards uh in that next round well y'all know my slight obsession with Jackson Shellstead anyway, but uh, Oregon slight, it's slight, it's like minute, okay, but it's real recognized, real, okay, you don't, you don't get it. Get, get, get this guy. With the Ducks, three to four guys playing 30 plus minutes, Eric, eight guys checking in, but um, really it's just, there's, a, there's just a handful of cats here for the Ducks that we need to consider, I think. Who are you starting with? Yeah, the the reason why it's it's such a short list is that South Carolina plays at one of the slowest paces in the country, right? Three hundred and fifty fourth in tempo, and they are great defensively, right? Fifty third in defensive efficiency. So, really, uh, not ideal combination when we talk about DFS, right? Um, you know, Jeff was talking about the Illini earlier. You know, the, their fan base hates their defense, but from a DFS perspective, you love it. Kind of the opposite for teams that are facing off against South Carolina. Um, you know, we can we can take a look at Nafali Dante. Um, you know, he's he's sitting here at at eight point six k. You know, this side is is pretty simple for me. Like, if you're gonna play anyone, it it would be Dante. Big upside, even though it is a tough matchup. 
but very much so a tournament only option and probably a pretty contrarian one at that. Cause I don't think people are going to be tripping over themselves to get into this game what? environment. No uh, way. <laughs> Mike, anyone else that we should yes. maybe even talk about here? Or is this basically, I Dante mean, just out of, this? just out of, you know, just out of respect for Jay, you know, we'll talk about Jackson Shellstead. I mean, Jermaine at 7,100. That's a revenge spot, so kind of a narrative street. But Jackson Shellstead uh, at 6,200. Uh, he's been good recently, but, man, like, golly, you're just going to see South Carolina walk the ball up the court. Um, mm-hmm. It's not like Oregon plays fast. They're, 200th in, they're basically 200th in the country in tempo. We're just not going to get a lot of possessions in this game, and I don't really want to pay – uh, 7,100 and 6,200 for lead guards, and it's kind of ugly on the other side too, man. So I don't know, Jay. Uh, you gonna uh, you gonna fire at least one shell at Jackson Shell's that ceiling game against South Carolina in the tournament to remember? Yeah, I think you've got to because I I love I think Shellstad's game is tailor made for this time of year. The guard play that you love to see the the guys that flash. Somebody's gonna somebody's gonna have that coming out party, and I hope it's Shellstad, and I hope it's you know in his first round. And then watching him uh, clash with those Creighton guards, uh, that's the kind of game that I want to see in March. But they have to get through South Carolina first, a very good defensive team, and one that if they can control the pace of the game, the slow and plodding, and that's what South Carolina is going to want to do. So um, we'll see uh, how it goes. I will fire. I will have a shell of shell stat. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Fire yeah, yeah. shell stat off in that one, baby. Uh, look who's back. Guess who's back. back hey, yo. You're. Tell a friend. What's up, Kayla? It feels like Christmas Eve. You know why it feels like Christmas Eve? Because it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's here, Kayla, and you are too. Thanks for hanging out with us. Always appreciate you. We're putting it right into the veins tonight, man. We remember. Right there. Right into the and veins. Kalen was out here grinding with, with us at the beginning of the season when we were breaking down these conferences. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good to see you back there in the live chat. Let's get this Gamecock side in here. Uh, starters getting good run, Mike. Nine guys checking in. And, again, Oregon hasn't <sighs> exactly shown – since late December that they're wanting to play a ton of defense. <laughs> yeah, this reminds me of the, the Michigan State game we talked about earlier. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, Oregon's defense got cooked during the conference slate, and obviously they made a run um, offensively during the Pac-12 championship, but they were 10th in the Pac-12 in defensive efficiency play, uh, during uh, conference play. Now, obviously, Dante missed – I'll call it four and a half games um, – Colin Ray Broyles, like just because of his upside, has to be mentioned at 8K. I mean, yeah, I could, I could see him. I could see him putting up a 40 bomb here, which you, you absolutely love at, at 8K, right? That's 5X. He's got upside to go even more. He's been, I mean, one of the best freshmen in the country. Like people aren't really talking about. So uh, Murray Boyles is is for sure in the player pool. Uh, Michi Johnson, it's okay, 6500. It's just okay. The game environment, though, are we really going to get a ceiling Michi game? Um, he's a contrarian tourney type play. Like, I could see Michi Johnson, this game goes over by four or five points, and Michi Johnson's on the optimal with like a, a 31 spot. Um, so, you know, 30, 32 spot here. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, this South Carolina side is just kind of whatever. BJ Mack, I wish he played 30 minutes consistently because he would smash. <laughs> uh, find him sort of interesting. Really, it's Colin Murray Boyles, and, man, I just – Eric, man, like, I don't know, man. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Is there anybody else in South Carolina? Not really. Um, Talon Cooper is there, right? Um, all cardio team type of type of guy. He just plays a pile of minutes. Um, he doesn't shoot it all that often, right? So not exactly what you're looking for heading into this game environment. Maybe, maybe they decide to be a little bit more aggressive in this one, but – I I would I would cast that as unlikely, right? Um, he he did have a good game against Kentucky, right? So you know he's he's got it he's got it somewhere in his locker to you know to reach back and give you forty. But I just I don't know if this is a game environment like you're 
you're really only clicking the button if you're if you're looking for ways to get very very different with Cooper. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, just 137 point total here. I don't like the metrics. Couple of good defensive teams, and again, if South Carolina has their way, and then like you were saying, like they just drag it ass the whole time. Like it 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 makes for a uh, yeah. Well, this next game is I, – I wish I could say that we were going to change it up a little bit and not have another slow, plodding <laughs> pace. But Nevada and Dayton is, are both going to bring the same sort of gimmick there. Both teams outside the top 200 in tempo, and Dayton is actually 337th in tempo in the country this year. Both very good defensive teams, and both uh, are efficient when they do – uh, get the ball, you know, in terms of they are utilizing their possessions, I guess. Uh, so some good basketball here, but they're just – they're happy taking their time. So the 143-point total even – that might even feel a little – Feels a little, right? Wait. Yeah, like yeah. I don't know if, if we're getting there even. So um, let's start with the Wolfpack. Eight guys checking in for Nevada, Mike. Three to four guys hitting 30 minutes. Anybody? Anybody? I mean, if you can look at the two guards, I mean, Lucas is 7,300. I mean, he's okay. Like, I don't – there's no way I'm clicking his name in a tournament. Not when not when Blackshear is 7K. Like, why would I yeah. – Blackshear is the tournament guy. Like, why would I go to Lucas? I'm not really playing much cash. Like, I guess you could go to cash for Lucas. Um, but Blackshear, man, at, at 7K, like, he's a guy that has 35, 40 fantasy point upside. Um, you got to figure these guys are going to play max minutes in this one. I don't know how they're probably only going to check out maybe for a couple of minutes. Uh, so you're going to get, you're going to get great minutes from these guys. I think Blackshear is certainly, uh, certainly in play, uh, probably the only name that I'm clicking on the Nevada side. Uh, so yeah, man, uh, that's it for me on this side. What about Dayton, Eric? I mean, again, 337th in tempo, um, Really, only one guy I can think of. Are, are you thinking? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, the the one guy that you're associating with uh, with Dayton <laughs> is the one guy that everybody associates with Dayton. Deron Holmes, uh, not quite the price king, a hundred dollars less than that. Um, I mean, he has been on an absolute tear to finish out the season, right? So you know, you can you can make a, a defendable argument for why he's priced where he is. But given the game environment, given the fact that he is the second most expensive player and there are uh, a little bit more uh, known commodities or kind of household names in, uh, in a lot of the Creighton players right there below him, I, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of people going to home. So, you know, make some a contrarian consideration. Um, I would just – I would feel – I would feel not good about spending almost 10K <laughs> on a, a player in this game environment. With the defense that Nevada plays and the tempo that Dayton runs, like obviously the tempo hasn't been an issue for Holmes, you know, in the last yeah, few still getting there. In, the, in the last four yeah, or five games. Is. So um, it hasn't really made him any difference, but it's going to be tough for me to, to get there with him. For show, for show. Hop in that live chat. Let us know. Are you paying ninety six hundred for Holmes? Are you getting there? Any Bueller? Bueller? You anybody know? All right. Well, let us know if you do <laughs> think you have Holmes. Drop it in the live chat as we bump all along the road. Now, my God, why do I just? I don't even know if I'm going to watch the game. Bum, bum, bum. Colorado State and Texas, the fighting Rodney Terry's apparently We've got the cup, We've got it, got it over at the Moody. The Rodney State. Terry edition that that these guys like to call the Rodney Terry edition, Yeti, and it just makes me want to throw it against the wall every time. But here we go. Let's talk about them. Colorado State coming off that. What would you call that? <laughs> I can't call basketball them. game. Like it wasn't a basketball. It was uh, a clinic. A, uh, <laughs> a a very one sided Tom Amansky's basketball back clinic back of nineteen sixties basketball championship. Oh wait, they looked really good. My Colorado State did. Um, three guys playing thirty plus minutes here. A couple of good defensive teams. Um, One forty five total. I think we still got to consider some players here though. Uh, yeah, Isaiah Stevens is down to 7,500. <laughs> uh, he's got 40 fantasy point upside. I know he hasn't 
done much recently. Uh, man, like, God, I wish his name wasn't Isaiah Stevens and I, we've been covering him for a few years. <laughs> Cause uh, yeah, I just, I feel like he's, he's just uh, for that price point. Like that is like eye popping. Uh, so Isaiah Stevens, is definitely somebody with 35 to 40 fantasy point upside, you know, high usage, high assist rate and get steals. So Oof, man, I mean, I'm not going to go bonkers with it, but I'm going to get him in some of my lineups for sure. Uh, Joel Scott, 6,900. Like, he's been fantastic over the last couple of games. There's minutes all, kind of all over the place uh, throughout parts of the year. Um, but we're kind of settling in, so it feels like um, he's in a decent spot, Eric. Anybody for you? Uh, it's kind of a weird thing to say out loud that Nick Clifford is the most expensive player on the Colorado State side. Uh, yeah. 7.6k, so just just barely, um, it, you know, by uh, barely edging out Isaiah Stevens for for that, um, you know, for that price king crown on his team. It technically on a slate of this size and of this structure, like everyone is in the player pool. It just, I'm, you know, if if I want to play a Colorado State player, I'm I'm going to Stevens for uh for a hundred dollars more, right? So, um, you know, that's that's really where where my mind is right. Like probably, I don't know, like 7.1 K seven K flat uh, makes a little bit more sense for, for Clifford, but you know, coming in more than Isaiah Stevens, just, I, I can't really make it make sense. So I'll, I don't I'll, know, be, like, I, I'll be playing I Stevens where I'm I on the Rams. It. Right. I get it. I get Steven's ceilings, but uh, I mean, we've seen it from Clifford at least semi recently, like the memory, like I can't, We've seen Clifford hit over 40 fantasy points twice out of the last three. For me, for Stevens, like, I don't know if I can pay 7.5K for something that's so long ago, so so far from my memory. And here's the deal. Uh, I get Stevens. Uh, Mama Rocks was saying guards versus UT all day. It's more about, like, are you shooting a three ball against Texas? Like, Stevens is shooting 43% from deep. Clifford's 36% from deep. So, either one of these guys, I would, I I don't mind either one of these, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I I could see wanting to go to Stevens because of the the ceiling is just. Yeah. But we've seen a little bit more uh, recently from Clifford. So, either one of these guys, if they get hot, Texas gives up the three ball and. Micah chiming in saying Max Aceness on the slate in March take my money. Yeah, well, as a Texas fan, I <laughs> shut hope up you're and right, take Micah. my money. Um, I sure hope you're right. Let's get to that Texas side now, Mike. Are you playing Aceness at seventy seven hundred? He's the price king for Texas. Um, is it I Sue? Mean, like, what's the deal? Yeah. We 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 know who's playing on the court for them. We know who's gonna. We know who's getting the minutes. Can we justify playing over seven K for these guys? I mean, seventy seven hundred. I, I mean, he's in my – yeah, I mean, we know it's March. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> We've seen what he's done. Uh, didn't do it last year against Duke. That's for damn sure. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I've got some interest in Max A. Smith. Um, I think I'm more intrigued because there's somebody's price tag that is way down that should not be at this price tag, even though the matchup isn't – I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's terrible, but it's not – I mean, it's not great, and that's Dylan DeSue. 7K Dylan Desu, the you know 40 fantasy point first team all Big 12. Uh, yeah, that's the one that I'm looking at clicking. Uh, you know he's going to play a pile of minutes. You know he's going to take a ton of shots. His rebounding rate is very high. He's a double double threat every time. Uh, he can rack up a few stocks as well. A very good passer for a big man. We know what he did last March, right? Kind of kind of carried this team until he got injured. Um, Unfortunately, feels like we we had him against uh, we, <laughs> you know, Texas had him um, against Miami uh, would have made a made a world of a difference. So, yeah, I'm having a hard time clicking that Ace Miss name uh, because Dylan just is there at seven K. Tyrese Hunter. Got, um, yeah, I was gonna say you got Hunter at the same price though. So is it at seven K? Are you? Is it? Are there's you no way. How did how did we how did we get here? I don't know how we got to seven K Tyrese Hunter. I will not be clicking his name. <laughs> He is pretty much a scratch off. I will never play Tyree Center at this price tag. Um, I don't care that he, he went berserk against Oklahoma the other day. He did. Uh, he doesn't – I mean, not in this matchup. He won't score more than 25 fantasy points in this game tomorrow. So, no interest in Tyree Center. Eric, anybody else on this Texas side? 
We can go back to the Horton well, maybe. No. Uh four point four K. No. Uh we've <laughs> no. we've we've kind of we've kind of we've kind of heard this story before, right? Like um, you know, been an up to, up and down season for for Horton. Uh he you know, he played major minutes in that in that last game, right? Got up to thirty two minutes, but that's obviously not guaranteed, right? You need to only go back to the game prior where he played 18. Um, so you're you're definitely rolling the dice if you roster him. You know, he can he can shoot it, you know, well enough, but I, I think just this game, this game kind of style is gonna be a bit more of like a grinded out defensive type of struggle. So, you know, for for me, like every player is technically in the pool just with the way that pricing is structured, but they're 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 way more appealing mid four K guys before I'm going to Orton. I like Micah's thought on Asmus, just Asmus in March, just take my money. I get it. I feel like you have to have him in. Uh, if you're doing 40 lineups like Mike, you got to have Asmus in three or four, I think, two or three, whatever. Just get him into a couple of your lineups. Desue, again, that's the that's the ceiling play here in this matchup. Um, I refuse to let Horton hurt me. Horton <laughs> hurts a J. Horton hurts a J is what the new book is called, and I will not let it happen. Again, I can't do it. No, I was thinking about it. I, I wanted to go back and say, yeah, I was just kidding. I would play. I will not play Horton. I just can't do it. Uh, but the super sure. Yeah, uh, you know who is also staying strong and how he pays those bills. Mills pays bills, and they're saying MSU is going to win. Michigan hey. State and Mississippi State bet the house that MSU will win that game. Yeah, they, look, it's, it's, Man. big brain energy got- right there. We got we got all of our day ones lighting up the the chat tonight. All of our Amazing. friends from this season just swinging through. It's awesome. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Loving to see everybody. Mike is saying he commented the same thing last year, and <laughs> Mike advised strongly against, and he was right. How many times do we have to teach you this same lesson, old man? <laughs> That's what Mike's saying right there. The day ones. Mike has been around, and we always appreciate. Seeing Micah and Mills pay bills in the chat. Loving this. Loving Kalen. Oh, man. Memories. So, oh, bringing it all back, all the old commenters. We love seeing y'all in the chat. And we love seeing Kentucky on the slate as well. If, they can oh, boy. Stay close. if this game can stay close. <laughs> I don't want it to because Kentucky is my pick on the other side of the bracket to make it to the championship game. But if it stays close from a DFS perspective, um, this <laughs> talk about the shivers a little bit. We're not going to get to Kentucky first, though. Let's get to Oakland. All right, big time pace up here. Kentucky's ninth in tempo. Oakland two hundred thirty second. So those extra possessions are going to be there. Seventy five implied points actually for Oakland, Mike, on this side with five guys. I mean, we know the five yeah. guys playing thirty plus for Oakland. Uh, yeah, I was locked into that uh, Horizon tournament. That was uh, fantastic, man. So Trey Townsend, that's where it starts, right? So, I mean, he's 7,600. Um, these guys beat Xavier. Like, kids, Xavier's a top 60 Ken Palm team. At, on the road at Xavier, we actually called to take the points in that game early in the season. They handled business. He's coming off the 64. He's not going for 64 in this spot. Um, but at 7,600, he's kind of intriguing right like a little appealing uh usually living in the mid 30s has 40 fantasy point upside i'm getting a little more excited about the guards uh, in this game especially against kentucky because we've seen guards have massive games against kentucky so for me blake lantman and maybe it's just because blake lantman helped me win 1500 last week uh he's 5800 coming off of the 36 spot uh, look, the guy shoots a ton of threes. Um, he makes a lot of threes. He has a high assist rate. He's been putting up stocks too. Like he's been racking those up now. Uh, you know, Kentucky, uh, every now and then can, can play down to some competition. So I think price adjusted Blake Lantman's probably, probably my favorite guy. I mean, DQ Cole's interesting for tournaments. DQ Cole, uh, in the semifinal game just absolutely went bonkers at 35 fantasy points. He flashes every now and then for, for these high 20, low 30 uh, fantasy point games. So for tournament-style settings in this game environment, the top 10 tempo pace up, um, 
a team in Oakland that I wish they drew someone else. Really wish they had drawn a different team here. Um, because I think we we're we were on upset alert waiting to see their matchup. Uh I think them and Grand Canyon kind of got the raw deals of all the uh, all the really, really good mid majors that are in this tournament. But DQ Cole at 5,300, I think he's I think he's pretty interesting. So uh man, I'm not gonna do this Jack Golke thing. Like it is uh and, and I didn't do it last week, and he paid it off a bunch of times, Eric. This guy all he does is take threes. I, you know how I feel about that. You know how I feel about that. But he's also <laughs> all cardio. So what are your thoughts on Jack Golke? And I'll probably be pissed off if he's 20% tomorrow and goes off again against this Kentucky backcourt. You know he's going to. <laughs> you know he's I mean, <laughs> look, you, you don't – you don't you don't want to take the sharpshooter and completely shot dependent option in a pace up spot, right? <laughs> Maybe you do, right? Thirty seven percent from three. You mentioned all he does is shoot from downtown. Three hundred and twenty seven attempts from three. Lampman's up over two hundred. Like this this team just chucks from downtown. In uh, in Goki's case in particular. He's only taken eight two point shots all year long. So <laughs> only eight more than us he's three just, combined. He's just he's just posted up on on the on the the farther side of of the arc. Um, you know, that. another thing to consider is like he's he's coming in on kind of a mini heater, right? Thirty plus in three of his last four games. Definitely don't mind that at five point six k. You know, I I think with this price tag. With the pace up spot, with how much Oakland is going to be God, reliant on the three isn't point, he? <laughs> yeah, like he's the environment sets up for him to shoot even more threes than he typically does, <laughs> and because of that, because of the price tag, like he he might actually be kind of popular. Like I wouldn't be surprised to see him in that like oh I think like, I know, like ten popular. to fourteen percent I mean, range. Yeah, he's going to shoot more. fifteen threes at least, and then if he falls over a couple of rebounds and maybe a steal, <laughs> then that's when he gets annoying. And I'm going to oh God, I got to I got to bump my by five to ten percent, maybe. Ugh, just I was gonna say, just I can just throw, throw a few more shells in there. Yeah, get a get a little more gulky in the mix. You'll you'll feel better. <laughs> you will feel better. You know, you you'll sleep better this evening. You'll lay in your head down on your pillow, dreams of brackets and and uh, Caleb Love jerseys mm-hmm. for winning the one and done. Twenty five three point attempts dancing in your 25 head. Twenty five three point attempts from Jack Gulky. Oh my gosh, just do it, just. Do it, 5,600. I love it. I love the play there. Let's get to the other side here, Kentucky. Uh, I hate this so much because from a basketball perspective, watching Kentucky play, all of the talent that's out on the floor, I love it. Trying to spin the wheel and pick which one of these guys out of how many are playing, like <laughs> 11. A million. One million dozen, people will touch them. 11 D. Fulfillion, which is our subscribers' goal. Have we hit 850 yet? <laughs> we were so close. 850 was the goal tonight. Ooh, let us know if we've gotten there yet, and let us know if you uh, get us there. Either way, um, 850 the goal for tonight, but obviously the, the long-term goal is a Fulfillion, which is how many players that Kentucky plays at 848 right now. Just got the update in my ear from the producer. So yeah, a couple buddy. more to go. 848 is also uh, the number of players Kentucky plays. Uh, <laughs> somehow, somehow, a Fulfillion and 848, both of them. Um, what about Kentucky, though, man? A couple of guys will play 30, right? Yeah, and Calipari was saying he's got he's got something. I don't know what the exact quote was, but he's got a surprise. Or so I don't know if that means oh, that Dillingham and Shepard are going to start. That's what I want. That's what I've been dreaming of. <laughs> Probably not, but. Got a surprise um, for you. I mean, Oakland defensively was good for the horizon, right? Um, maybe like, Kentucky's just an offensive juggernaut. Oakland's dead last in the country in assisted field goals made. <laughs> so bump to uh, bump to all the guards <laughs> for Kentucky, and there's like 10 of them. But no, I mean, Reed Shepard's 8,800. We know Reed Shepard can go for 50. We know, but, oh, man. I mean, he's not going to be owned either at 8,800 when you have Reeves Nobody's at 8K. Yeah, no one's going to Shepard. I mean, he has a twenty-four percent assist rate, so he can take care of that. Uh, you know, he gets that boost there. He doesn't get the boost because he shoots a ton of shots. As Antonio Reeves, they're all kind of cannibalizing each other. That's been the story all year that we've done this Kentucky side, right? Like one of them is going to go for forty-five, the rest of them are going to go for like in the you know thirties, <laughs> and it just is what it is. So, I would love for Rob Dillingham to start, Eric. 
Um, could you could you could you like speak that into existence so I can play him in some of my in some GPP action? No, no, I will not speak that into existence. Um, I would like to go to there as well, but I mean, getting a, a pulse on this guard rotation for Kentucky has been the stuff of nightmares all throughout the season, and I mean, even even if Coach Cal is dangling some sort of surprise out there, like I just I don't I don't. I don't have the faith and confidence that it's going to be a good <laughs> surprise, right? Um, so yeah, Dillingham, like you know, hopefully he gets unleashed, right? His his rates are insane: thirty percent shot, thirty percent assist rate. You know, five to six upset, six uh, x upside in this kind of spot, right? Like you know, it it all just comes down to the minutes. If if he's getting the run, you feel real good about him paying off a low seven k price tag. If he's back to you know this this mess where he's playing sixteen or seventeen minutes, like your your night could be over really quickly, right? So that has him in the GPP only category, which is where he's been pretty much all throughout the season, right? So you know if if we just if we just guaranteed twenty six minutes, it would be a thing of beauty, but that is not the Calipari world that we live in. I mean, he did play 29 last game, and he's played 20 uh, – oh, then he played 17. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 29, just, 17, 26, 24, 16. Uh, just, just, when you think you're, just when you think you're out, they pull you back in. Yeah, absolutely. Before Hopefully Trey Mitchell's right, a surprise. 5,200 right. plays like 30 minutes. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, that'd be dope. Well, don't expect any defense, okay? No. We know that. Because the Bishop has to get 15. Defense. Bradshaw's got to get five. Oh, Yento's got to get 18. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Not doing it. Not even spending the wheel. It's going to be tough because, you know, there's going to be so many points scored. And, again, like, just the – but how many times have we seen him score all those points and then like only one guy like <laughs> one guy goes off? Like, yeah, if you if you if you beat me with an eighty eight hundred dollar Reed Shepherd, I mean Congratulations. You see, the, you see the ceiling there, but I'll just Take shake your hand yeah. and I'll just shake your hand and, and move on there. Psych guy hanging out with us, Ooh. dropping uh dropping some betting lines here that the majority of people will think that the Oakland Golden Grizzlies play in California. No, that is not – Ice Cube is not walking out of his house in Oakland <laughs> yeah, and, and, and walking onto campus. No, no, no. That's that's, up, that's Auburn Hills, y'all. That's Michigan. That's Detroit. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Thanks for hanging out, Psych Guy. Thanks for hopping <laughs> in the live chat. Always love to see those kinds of comments for sure. Um, McNeese State and Gonzaga. ooh I mean, um, 150 points implied total here. Ken Palm's number is only a six-point spread here, which on the surface, you're like, this is McNeese State and Gonzaga. Like, okay, this is not your grandpa's McNeese State. This is – No, no. We know why. This is, this Will, is Wade. Will Wade's McNeese State. <laughs> this is Will Wade's McNeese State. You're damn right it is. Uh, so uh, this is going to be a popular pick, I feel, on many people's brackets. For McNeese State to make an upset, I was not one of those people, actually. I do think the Zags hold on on this one. But we like a lot of what McNeese State does from a DFS perspective, especially in a pace-up spot for them with Gonzaga 83rd in the country in tempo. We know the guys from McNeese State that play 30-plus. Anybody else, though? Yeah, I mean, uh, you can look at Javon Garcia at 6K. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of kind of weird, right? He's like kind of the de facto third option. I mean, his rates are okay. Yeah. Uh, but you love you love the pace there. Uh, a cheaper way to kind of get into this game. So interesting, but we can't. I mean, we can't really bury the lead, right? I mean, we know the two guys, like you just said, that the ball is going to be in their hands. They're going to play a ton of minutes, and that's yeah. going to be Shahada Wills, the TCU transfer, and then Christian Shoemate, uh, the big man there. So. Uh, look, Shahada Wells at 8,700. I wish the price tag, he's our cover boy. I wish the price tag wasn't quite this high, but you understand why it has to be this high because all he did, um, you know, this year is put up 40 plus. Um, now we're getting Gonzaga, we're getting the pace up right, but Gonzaga a little bit better defensively than, than what we're used to seeing here, right? I'm I'm a little indifferent on Shahada Wells. Uh, I do want to have uh, some pieces 
uh, in, in some of my lineups from this game. So I feel like I'm going to get him into a couple. Christian Shoemate sitting there at 7K is in a weird spot because Gonzaga plays this like weird three big men, uh, you know, Watson, Greg, uh, EK, all six, six, ten, like and above when everyone, and then the two little guards around them, when everyone else is doing something different, which I think not a lot of people are taking into account, Jay. And I think that's kind of why you like, maybe State's not going to, has never played it. No, 361 teams haven't played a team like Gonzaga that runs this type of lineup out there. And their sixth man is a six, nine freshman, like a, a forward. So I don't know. I, I think from a, a picks perspective, I, yeah, Gonzaga is probably not getting enough love. I picked McNeese State, but Christian Shoemate at 7K, like he's going to, he's going to have a, he's going to be very busy. And I could actually see him getting into foul trouble. He, he does, uh, he gets a little handsy and does get into foul trouble from time to time. So at the price tag, you don't mind it. You're also not seeing like these huge ceiling games from him. Now, obviously, more possessions here. Uh, yeah. He's got to stay on the floor and out of foul trouble. So Shahada Hillel is definitely interesting uh, for me on that side. If you had to pick between the two, Eric, Shahada Wells, the 8700 price tag, Christian Shoemate, $1,700 Sheever. They're both the studs. Shoemate feels like he's got the tougher matchup. Where are you going with this one, man? Are you finding the 8700 I, I think I am finding the 8700, right? I, I like the matchup for Wells a little bit more. I also don't know how many people are going to be going up to 8.7K for Shahada Wells or really for any player from, from McNeese State, right? So... Um, you know, creating a little bit of leverage that way. Another player that I am very keen on in these survivor type of formats, as mm -hmm. I do have McNeese State, not only advancing past Gonzaga, but actually facing off against Purdue. So you need to have a big game. <laughs> that's, that's the game theory, right? They're not doing that if it's if it's not on his back. Yeah, so no, I am watching that Wells flag. On that wall. <laughs> you need Shahada Wells on that wall. I get it. I get it. Well, what about Gonzaga? What about the other side, Mike? Um, Stars yeah. playing big minutes. We know the names. Obviously, this yeah. is a talented team and uh, not playing a ton of guys this time of year, which is normal for, for the Zags. Just really getting that rotation down um, to an exact science. Uh, what do you think about the Zags, Mike? Yeah, I mean, these, I mean, they're solid defensively. Um, no, obviously, didn't play the schedule that even the Gonzaga played. Um, but they had some trouble controlling their own defensive glass. And when you play three bigs like Gonzaga does, that's kind of interesting. Um, also, there's 333rd in opponent assist rate. God, I'm in, I'm in love with a lot of Zags, man. And they also play max minutes. So Graham EK at 8,300. Uh, yeah, I think he's got – I think he's got 40 to 45 fantasy point uh, range here uh, in this spot. So uh, he was in a groove before that St. Mary's game where he basically had four fouls the entire game and only played 19 minutes um, in that game. He was actually, man, him and Mitchell Saxon, that was a phenomenal game for the 19 minutes that he played. If he had played 30 minutes in that game, he would have scored 35 fantasy points. So yeah, I, I have love for Graham EK. Um, I'm not getting the the eight to nine, eighty eight hundred to nine thousand price tag. I just got to get to eighty three hundred. So I definitely think he's in play. Nimhart, I don't know that I want to pay eighty two hundred for Nimhart. Um, and part of that is because the guy that's below him is eighteen hundred dollars cheaper. Now Nimhart, I mean a guy that uh, you know obviously it can put up a, a put up big games can can get you into the forties absolutely. So he's in the player pool. I'm not going to completely cross him off. But I have to look like if I'm play EK, I'm probably not going to get to Nimhart. I'm not going to put them together for sure. And, and the problem with Nimhart for me and why I played maybe a little more EK than Nimhart is because Nolan Hickman's sitting there at 6,400. Nolan Hickman's like the ultimate GPP play. He has been this entire season. He's going to play – if this game stays close, which a lot of people think it is, we're going 40 minutes with, with Nimhart and Hickman. And if Hickman's going to take 15 shots like he normally does, he's got – uh, the ability to rack up three or four assists. Um, you know, when you're on the court that long, you're going to find rebounds. You're going to get an, a steal here or there. So uh, this guy, you know, can get mid thirties and at 6,400, I'm absolutely in love with, with mid thirties, which uh, should, should drag down any ownership that Ryan Hemhard gets, which makes maybe makes him a little more interesting for, for large field tournaments at 8,200. But yeah, man, I, I think Nolan Hickman's just an absolute smash play, Eric. Uh, what about Greg and Watson? Do you have a do you have a one that you prefer over the other? And what are your what's your take on the two guards as well? 
Yeah, both of them kind of live in that uh, in that weird tweener zone, right? Like, I think most people are going to either pay up for EK or try to take advantage of the price tag on Hickman. So, like with Nemhard, Watson and Greg are just sitting there, largely overlooked. Of the two, I would I would lean towards Watson, right? Like this this kid is is really just the heart and soul of this team. He he does he does so much for for this for the for these Zags really on both sides of the court. All of his rates that you're looking for are north of you know twenty percent, which is absolutely the baseline that we want. He actually distributes the ball pretty well for for a forward, right? Thirteen percent assist rate. Oh yeah, he can chip and he can dip. Two percent block rate, three percent steal rate. Doesn't take a ton of threes, but shoots forty percent on them when he does. You know, he he hasn't been hitting his his ceiling games all that often, so that coupled with where he kind of slots in in the the pricing on this Gonzaga side. You know, I, I doubt that he'll be really owned at all. So, you know, he, he's it, it puts him in a in an interesting spot as a contrarian play in what's a big total and what uh, myself and a lot of people will think will be a very competitive game. You know, an, an overlooked Watson that has so many ways to fill it up is is going to be something that will catch my interest. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, pick a zag, put him in. Hickman at sixty four hundred, like you said, Mike, the ultimate GPP play. I, I think we've got to consider that it's 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 just sitting right there. All these zags right. play four. They're gonna play thirty eight yeah. to forty minutes. They just don't come off. Yeah. Neither yeah. neither guard comes off the court. They don't have another guard it's, that they trust. They're gonna, they're gonna play the whole game. So I'd rather go with Hickman and just you know get there. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us, especially if you're live. Um, it's one and done after dark on the East Coast already, and we're getting there Central Time as well. So thanks for hanging out with us, doing your part in the Green Screens Media Universe by hitting those like and subscribe buttons, getting the one and done bracket challenge. You can find that link in the live chat as well. 10 a.m. ish is like the deadline, so click that link and we'll be getting all the invites out by 10 a.m. at the latest. If you've done it already uh, and you haven't gotten your emails, first check your spam folder. And then uh, if, you, if it's not there, then let us know and we'll reach out to you and, and figure things out to get you. We want as many people in to win that autographed Caleb Love jersey as possible. That's right. You heard correctly. Do not adjust your monitors or speakers or stereos. A, an autographed Caleb Love jersey to the winner. Show us some love in the live chat as well as Mills pays Bill saying Gonzaga's going down. I feel like that's going to be a very popular pick. And then just singing Auburn Hills – uh, brought it all back for Craig, bringing Joe Dumars <laughs> back. That's right, just saying Auburn Hills. I love it. You know what's funny is that when I think of that era of Pistons basketball, I think of watching a Pistons game at my grandparents' house, staying up late, and Bill Lambeer was the player of the game. You know, they did the graphic <laughs> yeah. afterwards, like, player of the game, just... blah, blah, blah. You know, like, put the stat line up there. The man had no points. And he Not had one. six and he had six fouls. And Bill <laughs> Lambeer was the player of the game for the Detroit Pistons that day, according to that broadcast. That's, that's, you know, if you know Bill Lambeer, if you know, you know. That's a Lambeer game. That's a that's a <laughs> Lambeer game. And it, it was almost like no stats, but still was mo the most valuable guy on the court. So anyways, thanks for hopping in there, Craig. And uh, Dylan hopping in and saying EK is gonna lead me to a takedown. Okay. All right, calling your shot like there. It. Calling your shot there. I dig that. Call your shot in the live chat like Dylan did. As we move on now, we've got some hideous totals here uh, coming up. Uh, South Dakota State and Iowa State. And the Iowa State team that I have going to the Final Four, a 138-point implied total here. But let's start with South Dakota State, Mike. Eight-man rotation, but uh, easily is questionable with an ankle, so it could be down to seven. Yeah, and I um... – I just saw a little bit ago that, uh, you know, looks like he's going to go. So, okay. I mean, just another guy that's kind of, I mean, 61 implied total. What are, what are we doing here? Like Zeke Mayo at 7,500. I mean, we've seen what I would say can do to guards, just completely take them out. I love this kid, but this is not the spot at all. I think if I were playing anybody from South Dakota State, it would be William Kyle because he's a banger. Uh, a guy that I, I feel like, well, I don't want to project anything or say anything negative about South Dakota State, but I mean, this kid is very talented. Um, ooh, 5,700, though. This is this Iowa State team. It's just an absolute grindhouse. Number one defense efficiency in the country. Yeah, they're pretty I good. I mean, he's going to play 30 minutes. Like, he, 
just a, a tertiary type play, I guess. Uh, uh, Luke Apple, same thing, man. Like this whole side, Eric. I mean, it's it's pretty disgusting when you consider the matchup. But the prices are kind of okay for these guys, and they they like the. It's not like the the tempo is terrible in this game. I mean, both teams okay in tempo, but it's just that that number one ranked defense for Iowa State that scares us on the South Dakota State side. So anybody else here on the squad that you think uh, worth looking at? Yeah, so what does uh, what does DraftKings do? They tempt us with a bunch of guys that play a pile of minutes in like a very reasonable price tag. Uh, Matt Mims is certainly Mims. someone that fits that mold, right? Uh, basically the min price, 3.5K. And he's out there for high 20s or low 30s minutes pretty much every single night, right? So, um, you know, that'll have him in the value pool. Obviously, the, the defense is is so good, and, and this implied total is just horrendous. So uh, not going to feel pretty good. Uh, you know, Mims in particular, he's not a high-usage guy. He's just kind of out there running around, getting his steps <laughs> in. Um, but at, you know, at, at 3.5K, like, he doesn't have to do a whole lot to pay that off. Um, you know, I... It feels I like a lot against build. Iowa State. <laughs> yeah, Fair. I I guess the thing with Mims for me is like I haven't really found a builds yet where I need to get down to like a three point five k player. So <laughs> yeah. if you if you find yourself in that circumstance, sure, <laughs> you know Mims Mims is a guy that you can you can maybe sprinkle in. This is why this is why this is why he's hot. Mims might have to be oh, if man. you want to spend up a little bit uh, for some of those higher price guys. Mims is somebody to turn to. For sure. Jeff saying that that game for the Pistons must have been against Jordan. I don't remember that part about it, but it was probably <laughs> one of those big time Eastern Conference matchups. And he just came in and showed out. And and if we're being honest, Lambeer probably uh, hit, you know, hit probably nut tap Jordan. You know, he, like Lambeer <laughs> was like Draymond Green, except oh, like you actually were scared. Did Draymond do something play. tonight? Because Twitter's kind of going. You actually scared of Lambeer. Oh, who, of course he did something tonight. Well, it's it's a it's a day that ends in Y. Of course Draymond did. Thanks. Uh, Dylan agreeing with you too, Mike, about Apple uh, liking him a little uh, there. So I mean, it's you know it's worth a shot, I guess, at, at that price tag, like you were saying. Um, the price tags are nice on Kyle and Apple and, and Apple, but. Yeah. Oh God, man. <laughs> like, I don't like playing guys that are. I just, I just don't like playing guys against the Iowa State. That's just. Yeah, that makes sense. Them. I mean, we, we were telling people all season to cross off guys uh, anytime they play against Houston or Iowa State in the, in yeah. the Big Twelve, especially, just because you knew what you were going to get. How about the Cyclones, Eric? Uh, eight guys checking in, three to four playing thirty minutes apiece. Uh, what about the Cyclones, man? Yeah, well, with with Iowa State, like we we know the the front court rotation is just an, an absolute mess, right? They they have a ton of bodies that that see min, minutes out there. Um, looking at the matchup in particular, you know, South Dakota State they they give up the three ball at a pretty high clip, two hundred and sixty six in the country in that regard. You know, for for me, like to whatever extent I'm I'm going into this game, you know, I want to I want to target the the two studs on the on the ISU side, so. That uh, that starts with with Kayshawn Gilbert. Um, you know he's he's sitting at seven point four k in this one. Twenty six percent usage rate is fantastic. Twenty two percent shot rate will certainly do. You like to see him rebounding in the seventeen percent clip for a guard. He can definitely dish it out. Twenty six percent assist rate and pokes out four percent steal rate. So shoots okay from three. Like we know that he's got thirty to forty type ceiling on any given night. You know this this price and how just kind of you know generally ugly this game is I, I think it's going to keep people away from you know really players on both sides so Gilbert might be you know kind of an interesting option and then we we can't talk we can't talk the Cyclones without uh spending a little spend a little time on Tom and Lipsy 7.4k um so you know you're, you're you're looking at a guy that is uh is is right there neck and neck from a pricing standpoint with Gilbert probably going to kind of split the market in terms of ownership um, you know, the, the rates across the board are pretty much identical, right? Like a lot of similarities in terms of the, the ways in which the Cyclones use these two players, same 30 to 40 point type, type upside, right? So flip a coin. If it was more than one option, we would say spin the wheel, but 
you know, one of these guys feels like they're probably going to have a, a pretty big game and both of them probably aren't going to be all that popular. I like Lipsy's game just in general, mm-hmm. um, just from a pure basketball standpoint. Uh, I don't like having to pick between him or Gilbert, though, in this one. Obviously, the reason, there's a reason that they're both they're both priced exactly the same here, and uh, one of them's going off, and the other one will have a fine game, but fine game is not getting you that comma uh, in the <laughs> win total, you know, in your in your in, in your dinero there, uh, in the account. So uh, it's tough, but somebody's going off, so. Pick one and go if you want. Uh, they're going to be on the court, and, and they're going to they're going to be around the ball. So, figure it out with the Cyclones. It's it's tough, especially in this total. Um, but hey, somebody's going off in that one. Another ugly one, even uglier. My gosh. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. So that total. Oh boy. <laughs> One hundred twenty-nine points. <laughs> Clean off the old eyes on that one. Um, brutal. Let's Saint can't, Peter's. Can't wait party. for the upset. I mean, <laughs> I mean, don't you dare! Like, not even. It's not I, mean, even it is, I don't even it think is, it's possible. It I guess technically, you no. Know, it's a Rick Barnes coach <laughs> team in March, so anything is possible uh, for Tennessee here. But let's let's go Saint Peter's first. Um, just God. horrible. Yeah. Do we have? I guess. 55 and 5 total? This is like Wagner all over again. Um, we said game by game. Yeah, we said game by game. We'll go quick on St. Peter's so we can get to some better games here at, at for the end here. St. Peter's terrible offensively, terrible tempo. Not great. I mean, they're okay defensively, but who have they really been playing? Um, not Tennessee and not Dalton Connect. Uh, God, you kind of need some offense to be good at, like, fantasy. So... <laughs> 350th in effective field goal percentage is terrible, but all the usage goes through two guys. I mean, Corey Washington, 6,100. I mean, 30% shot rate, 26% rebounding rate. Can get some stocks, but I don't feel good about it. Latrell Reed, I mean, he's 5K. Um 25% usage, 23% shot rate, 16% rebound rate, 32% assist rate. Okay. I just, I mean, supply total is disastrous. I don't, there's no reason to go here. There's no reason to go here. I don't, yeah, this is kind of a waste of time. What, Eric, man, on this, uh, on this Tennessee side, I mean, they're playing nine guys. They're probably not going to play big minutes because <laughs> it'll blow out, but we got to talk about them a little bit, I guess. Who do you like? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess by default, um, we can we can talk about Dalton Connect. Um, you know, the the matchup overall is you know pretty appealing, right? Like St. Peter's turns the ball over at like a twenty percent clip. Um, you know, they've um, you know they they've been playing better defensively, but it's against a two hundred ninetieth ranked uh, uh, strength of schedule, right? So not really a whole lot to worry about. Um, you know, Connect. This is his first. Tourney game, you know, he's probably gonna, you know, have a little extra juice to, you know, to, to, you know, make his, make his appearance one that is, uh, is a bit notable, massive upside every single time that he's on the court. You know, the, the downside is that Tennessee is probably gonna be up big and very early, and they have an <laughs> eye on a deep tournament run, a national title run, according to our very own Napsey Hustle, right? So, you know they're they're going to take every opportunity they can to keep their guys fresh. So you know, I'm, I mean, I'll never tell you not to roster connect, but if there's a if there's a point to break the streak, <laughs> this might be it. Yeah, I mean, same with Ziegler and AD, right? Like it's just their price tags. They don't scream 129. Now I know they're implied total 74, but even even that's kind of like okay. We got guys that can that can do it. They're gonna play their bench guys. Like no reason for one or two seeds unless they get into a dog fight to run their guys out max minutes. Like it just doesn't make any sense. So I don't know, man. We don't want to spend too much time on this one. We got a, we got a couple of bangers to kind of end the show here. So you sure? Uh, you sure you on. don't want to spend more time on this game? <laughs> no, I don't want to spend I, any more time on this. Sure, one. <laughs> we don't have to. Absolutely. Thank you very no. much. Let's move on then. North Carolina State and Texas Tech. 
148 point implied total here. North Carolina State, uh, it's not as clear cut in terms of who gets the minutes with regularity, Mike. It's a little bit of an up and down. Um, it's it's a fluid situation, I guess, is what we would say for North Carolina State. So, um, yeah, these are a couple of good defensive teams, a pace up spot for Tech, but what about North Carolina State? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, it's been tough to, to play these guys because it's just all over the place, right? Like who's in, who's starting, it just it changes. I think we got a little more clear line of sight, obviously, now that we're down to the very end. I think this game has a chance to go over pretty easily. 148 applied total. He could go over, um, you know, go over into the 150s. So uh, neither team was great in their own conference as far as defensive efficiency. Tech struggled defending the paint um, without Warren Washington, but it looks like he's been cleared to play. Uh, which I actually like for Texas Tech's chances to move forward in the tournament. Now they have somebody that can protect the rim and and now, uh, you know, handle these guys like DJ Burns and, uh, you know, Mo Diara. So I think for me, honestly, the one guy that I'm looking at here, and I feel like he's an absolute smash play because he's going to play 38 to 40 minutes, take a ton of shots and high assist rate is DJ Horn. Um, 6,200 is, is absolutely too cheap for him. Uh, especially in this spot, uh, you're gonna take 15 to 18 shots in this one. Uh, he hasn't really flashed the assist rate recently, but I mean, he's he's a solid uh, playmaker. Um, obviously, when you play that many minutes, you find yourself with some rebounds and some stocks. So I'm I'm really liking uh, you know what he's done. I had that big game against North Carolina, GPP target only because these, this guy can absolutely just disappear. Uh, so for me, DJ Horn's about it. I mean, I know Modiar has played really well, coming off the 42 against North Carolina, 6,700. I'm okay with it, especially since he does have 40 to 50 fantasy point upside. I mean, he gets it done with rebounding and blocks, and then if he does make all of his shots, and if he takes enough of those attempts, uh, Muhammad Diara at 6,700 is, is definitely someone that uh, that we have to take some shots on in tournaments. DJ Burns at 6K though, uh, I don't have a lot of a lot a ton of love. I, I love the game and. Love the name, but with Warren Washington back, um, 6K is okay. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, man. Uh, maybe I'm doing it wrong. I mean, he's been over you know, almost 5X uh, and, and playing well, but, man, he, his minutes can just go from, like, 18 to 30 to 24. So you just don't know with DJ Burns. I would rather just really consolidate my efforts into Horn and Diara and maybe maybe a sprinkle of, of Burns uh, on, like, a lineup. But – yeah, that's it for me, Eric. I mean, are you spinning the wheel on any of these guys? Yeah, it's a it's a fair point that the return of Washington probably makes things a little bit trickier for for Burns in particular. Um, I mean, no no major priorities remaining on the Wolfpack side, right? Like we can we can at least you know shout out Michael O'Connell, you know, really more of a mention just to not completely cross the room, right? Like he should be in the pool. You should rotate him in, you know, a little, little sprinkle here or there. It's just I'm not really sure if if he has what you're looking for to to get there, right? Like the, the usage rate, the shot rate are, are both ugly. You know, maybe this is one of those games where he makes his limited attempts and has some upside, but also maybe not. He, he's been playing, you know, 30 plus minutes here recently. So, you know, you, you don't you don't feel terrible about that in the low 5Ks, but kind of like I said off the top, right? Like not a, not a huge priority, but someone to sort of weave in if you find yourself a little overexposed to some of the other low 5K guys in your pool. Yeah. Um, do you guys think this is an over? Like it, it does sort of feel like this could be one that could get into almost 160 in terms of the points, like these teams just get going. How about Texas Tech, Mike? Um, you know, before that, that uh, let's call it a Cinderella run in the ACC tournament. I think that that's fair to call it that. Uh, NC State was really giving it up before that run. <laughs> yeah. You beat up inside and out, a, a lot more from three, right? So we give up the three and – and that was uh, that, that's definitely one way to get at them. But for the Red Raiders, um, lower prices, I guess, with the top guys, which makes it a little yeah. bit intriguing, especially uh, at a total that's at least near 150 there. So uh, who are you starting with if, if, with the Red Raiders, if anybody? 
Oh, you know where I'm starting. It's Pop Isaacs. He's still under <laughs> yeah. 7K, barely. And he's got 5X upside and even more at this price tag. So why would I not go to Pop Isaacs, who even if he's shooting 0 for 15, he's still going to play a ton of minutes. <laughs> so you love that. Um, high assist rate. Poke out a few steals. 5 to 6X upside. So Pop Isaacs in the tournament pool for sure. Chance McMillan, 6,500. I mean, he had rolls growing. He's shooting 40% from three. I've got some interest in him. Um, you know, he's playing a pile of minutes recently, and he's, I mean, he's one of their better options and someone that can really get it going from three. So I'm going to have some chance McMillan exposure. That doesn't even feel good to say <laughs> because $400 more I can get to Pop Isaacs. And yeah. Joe Toussaint is also there, Eric. So am I, am I absolutely just doing it? Like that McMillan sandwich right in between them is what is really annoying. What, what are your thoughts it's on It's almost Toussaint? like you said that with a question mark at the end of it. Joe Toussaint is there? Yeah, he's there. Is he, he's he, interesting. He, he is there. He's Ron Burgundy. Uh, yeah, he is there. He's part of this guard rotation. They're all just kind of jumbled together from a price point, pricing standpoint. Um, you know, looking at the cheapest of the options is always kind of appealing, right? You know, I, I think I think this is a situation where where Toussaint's probably gonna go overlooked and he's he's a guy that can pop off every now and again, right? Like he's you know, young almost 40 a few games back. Um, you know, be because of that, you know, he'll he'll be a kind of tourney only only type of play. He's got the he's got the second biggest role on this team behind behind Isaacs, right? Second highest usage rate. Um, you know, he's he's always seemingly got the ball in his hands, right? So, you know, at the macro level, he feels like he's kind of a kind of a secondary option overall. But you know, if if we're if we're talking about Pop Isaacs maybe being a little bit popular or just trying to you know find a different way to get into this tech side, Tucson kind of checks those boxes, right? So feel feel okay with with him sitting at six point one k. Yeah, and we know that like that that forty burger. It's just in his back pocket, and it's there. If if you hit if you hit the Tucson game, you have a chance to uh, break the slate a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, get that comma. If, if you hit the Tucson game, open. so I'd be okay if you did. If you won twenty five k, I mean, I'd be okay. I'd, I'd be all right. I would take it. I guess. Yeah, definitely, I would. Yeah, Jeff saying big twelve teams I know against Iowa State as SDS. You're not gonna. Dude, yeah, man, I was just tough. Anybody against Iowa State crossing them off. Ryan, then, a uh, little bit of the, uh, you know, I believe this is called what they say a troll <laughs> job. <laughs> Three balls in the optimal lineup. Ryan, man. don't you don't you play with my emotions like that? And what Horn a does gut feel, punch. Horn does feel too cheap. Yeah, man, you're not, not going to get an opportunity too often to play a player with that upside at 6.2K, so. Uh, definitely makes them in. Two more games here at the showcase. We've run them all down. 14 games down, two to go. Hit those like and subscribe buttons if you've hung up with us this long. Uh, sounds like you appreciate what you're what you're seeing and what you're what you're experiencing here. So push those buttons for us. Help us get to 8:50 before the end of the night. Or if you're watching Thursday morning with your coffee, just <laughs> sipping on your coffee, getting ready to go. Because you know, if you're like me and you took off for the next couple of days and you're going to be sitting at home in the dark with the AC down as low as it can go and with the projector on the wall, yeah, you're, you're going to probably tune in. If you tuned in uh, on Wednesday night late, or if you tuned in Thursday morning, you're going to come back to it. So thanks for hanging out with us. Samford and Kansas, another game that will be a very popular upset pick once the brackets come out for sure. Samford, Seven point dogs against Kansas here. And we know McCullers out for Kansas. And I believe we read that that was about a two and a half to three point line movement alone with McCuller being ruled out. Um, Kansas is Kansas. We know there's a lot of talent there, including Hunter Dickinson, who's questionable. But let's start with Sanford first, Mike. Uh, just a lot of guys playing here, and the prices reflect that. Like, you just really don't know how to pin it down. But that does not mean that there are not some interesting plays here, especially with this total. Yeah. I mean, the price tags on these guys are phenomenal. I mean, overall Kansas was good. Over, like when you look at the metrics, but in big 12 play, as far as defensive efficiency, they're in the middle of the pack. 
Couldn't stop the three ball, um, which is what you kind of have to do <laughs> against Stanford. Give up 35% to Big 12 opponents. Uh, we'll start with the big man, though. Uh, Truer, Truer, 5,800. Uh, he's coming off a 48 and a 56. And it's not like Hunter Dickinson is like this absolute like stopper on defense, especially with the way that this offense, we watched our bracket show that we did. Uh, man, they're going to be out there running around, shooting threes. He's going to be setting screens and rolling. And, yeah, uh, I have a feeling I'm going to be pretty – pretty heavily exposed to uh Chur Chur right here. I, I do worry on the defensive side that Hunter Dickinson is probably going to take a million shots um, and yeah. that could put him in foul trouble. So I'm, I might have need to tamper some expectations, especially since I have Jermaine Marshall sitting there at 4,700. Now this is Bucky ball. The coach Bucky McMillan got to watch his uh, press conference today. Uh, I'm a big fan of this guy. Uh, very confident. Jermaine Marshall sits here at 4,700 coming off the 35 piece. When we profiled this team, at the beginning of the year, we put him in our contenders bracket, and a big reason why is because Jermaine Marshall was there. So uh, you just wish the minutes were more secured with this team. I do run a lot of guys because they play this, like, fast pace, like, we're just going to get all up in your shit and just, man, like, it's it's crazy to watch this team play. But you're getting the price tag, right? So if you get the right guys, uh, this is excellent. Ryland Jones. Uh, now looks like a man. He looked like a baby uh, five years ago. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's funny how that happens in college. Uh, he's only 4,400 and a phenomenal you're play here. You're all right before your very eyes. Right for our eyes, guys. Yeah. yeah, I mean. Playing, playing D1 ball for seven years will do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, four straight, 20 plus. And he's kind of the, the one guy that's playing high 20s, low 30s minutes. I have a feeling he's going to play low 30s minutes. The only problem I see is DeJuan Harris is probably going to uh, – be locked up against them, kind of scary, which is why I kind of like Jaden Campbell at 4,300. Um, he's a great three point shooter at 4,300, so I definitely like him, uh, for sure. And then AJ Stanton McCray, he's 4K. I just don't know what's going on if he's uh, trying to find information on why he hasn't really been playing because he's like their second best player behind a church, sure, sure. and he's 4K and he's put up massive games this year, uh, at this price tag. We're talking six, seven, seven X, so. Gonna look to see what's kind of going on with this because if I could get 25 to 28 minutes from him, I'm all over that. So, um, yeah, there's a ton of options. Like, I'm just gonna mix and match and see which ones work and which ones don't, <laughs> and let the chips fall D where they DK may. is just begging you to play guys from this Samford side. Absolutely, yeah, they are. Man. They are, and at this price, I totally understand, especially. Uh, you know, 155 point implied total here. Somebody's scoring some points. So it, it might come down to filling out your lineup and coming down to the end. And if you've got 4,700 left, you go Marshall. If you've got 4,300 left, you go Jaden Campbell. Sort of just playing it that route and plugging in and, and going with what you've got there. Kansas, though, Eric, I mentioned it earlier, McCullers out. Uh, so that's sort of going to concentrate some of that usage onto some of these other guys. But um, honestly, like, We've got Dickinson um, announced today that he's going to play, right? Mm -hmm. The questionable tag was there, but he's going to play. And, uh, you know, Mike's guy, Furphy, Furphy mania. But <laughs> uh, here's the deal, though. It's, this isn't as much about Kansas as it might be about Samford, Uh Got to be by 50 against Purdue to open the season. Yeah, that's the beginning of the season. This is a different team, right? But uh, And they're everybody's pick to sort of take uh, Kansas out, our, our Samford. But either way, Samford struggles with rebounding, uh, and they offer plenty of stock opportunities. So Dickinson, Furphy, anybody else for you on this Kansas side, Eric? No, those are those are really the the two to to keep in mind, right? Uh, with with Dickinson being announced back in, um, you know, Mike kind of alluded to it as he was talking about the the Samford side. I would expect him to see a significant amount of usage and really have kind of the whole of the offense run through him. And we we know what what he's capable of when this team is at full strength, right? So the upside is absolutely there. You know the. I guess the concern is just conditioning, right? He is coming back from injury in his own right. So, you know, not, not 
perfectly confident in him being ready to jump right back in and not only shoulder a normal load, but, you know, a, an even greater expectation for this shorthanded Jayhawk side. But yeah, I mean, even if he's not conditioned, right? Like the game plan has to be a heavy dose of Dickinson. So uh, he'll be a big part of the tournament pool for me, you know, with, with how popular this, this Sanford side is um, in terms of bracket picks. Don't mind trying to get a little different with some, uh, with some Kansas players in those uh, survivor formats as well. Right. If they sneak their way past, you're, you're going to be one of a very few number of, of, of teams or builds that have Jayhawks on them. The other name that you mentioned, Johnny Furphy, um, you know, he's, he's yet again, kind of their next man up. Right. So, um, you know, usage wise with McCuller out, he's the one who's been getting his name called a little bit more, you know, he, he can, you know, put up bombs when he's, when, when he was out earlier in the year. Um, so, you know, you, you definitely like the game environment for, for Furphy in particular, Dickinson being back, I think actually kind of opens up the floor a little bit for him. So kind of an interesting play at, at 6.9 K. I mean, you know, there there's plenty of talent on this, on this KU side. It's just, there's not a super clear picture as to who, who the, the Robin to Dickinson's Batman is going to be tomorrow. And, you know, Furphy in the, you know, in the high six Ks is a, is a pretty, pretty strong candidate to, to be the one who has a name called. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And you love the total, the, the implied total of 155 mm-hmm. points in that game as well. We are here at the very end of 16 of 16 games. So we are breaking down here on one and done for the Thursday slate for the old dance that is large. The large dance, is that what they call it? The, the extremely <laughs> huge dance. The uh, it's large. It's, it might even be big. It might even be a big thing. You can call it big if you Easy. wanted to, but don't say it to Easy. get. Don't say the big. Don't the trademark hashtag restricted R. All those things. So. The big cha cha. The big cha cha cha. Hey, uh, speaking of of uh, big cha chas, we are almost cha cha right up to 850 in fact we are at 849 subscribers we are right there watching on youtube make sure you hit that button already if you haven't it could be you get us up to 850 it could be you you could be number 850 tonight if you're watching live with us i mean and it is after you see me yawning it's after minutes at 10 1206 here uh, on the i-35 corridor where your broskies are if you're hanging out with us live and ryan is uh, like we see Ryan in the live chat right now. Make sure you get over there and hit those buttons. And while you do that, we're going to bring up Ryan's comment real quick, asking, do you guys prefer to target players in closer spreads or do blowouts not play a factor in who you target? Mm. I think it does matter. I think it makes a difference in some of these where if you the know studs. it's going to get out of hand. But again, like – some of the yeah. mid-tier guys, the guys that we're talking about playing at 5,500 to 6,300 anyway, like a lot of those guys are going to get their full complement no matter what. So um, do you approach it a certain way? Are there certain blowouts that you don't mind playing in, Mike, before we get to this last game? I mean, blowouts with like high tempos um, that we talked about, the Arizona Long Beach game. I don't mind taking shots there, but – I mean, a lot of the studs that we like, they're not in the one and two. We, they're not on North Carolina. They're not on Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the studs that we like are in the Iowa State game because it's only 7,400 to get in there. Uh, even though it could blow out, it feels better to pay 7,400 than it does to spend 8,900 in a complete, like, just absolute ugly spot. And then you got these games that, like, these close games, there's going to probably be, there's going to at least be one overtime game. Like absolutely one overtime game. Uh, so one of these is going over. There's gonna be games that go um over, but yeah, I just I just I want to be careful with exposure in the first these six teams are I know we're gonna recency bias on what happened with FD, uh, FDU. Like that's such a once in a lifetime type thing. It was that against? twice uh, in St. Peter's so absolutely twice, right? Uh excuse me, uh fairly Dickinson. Uh my the point being is like UMBC that happened because of the way Virginia plays. Like, so mm-hmm. I feel like the uh, the FDU one is more of an anomaly uh, than anything else. But 
yeah, I just I want to be careful with playing guys in massive. To- we did this all year, right? We don't, big totals. It's like the studs. Like, yeah, they're they can get there in the first half, and then you're like, why did they finish at four X? Because the game is out of hand, and you play two days later in the NCAA tournament. Like, what 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 incentive to a coach to play your stud thirty eight minutes and, and get them hurt? Yeah, like, it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, love these eight nine matchups, these seven tens, these five twelves. Those are the ones we're trying to hammer out. No doubt about it. Thanks for hopping in there, Ryan, and for staying up late with us tonight. If you're hanging out with us again Thursday morning, drop us a line in the comments. Let us know what your plans are. Last game here. Thanks for hanging out with us. Drake and Washington State, a 141-point implied total here. Uh, Washington State, another one of those just plodding (laughs) past 300 in tempo, but plays really good defense here. Against the Drake team, uh, with again, like we talked about Devries being the you near know, the damn near the price king of this one. Uh you know, this is everybody's playing 28, 30 minutes, Mike, uh, in this rotation for, for Drake, but can we get up to this price? I think I mean it's, it's tough. It's, it's yeah, it's it's a lot, but you know he's gonna play all forty minutes. Yeah, yeah, ninety seven hundred, but he's gonna play all forty. This is what we're talking about. If I'm gonna pay for a stud, <laughs> I, even though the game environment might not be as great, it's gonna be a close game. I say game environment is in like possessions and total, but hell, I mean he's gonna have a thirty five percent usage rate in this game, if if not more. I mean hell, he's gonna take. <laughs> 20, 25 shots in this game, it feels like. I mean, he, he's done that a few times already in the, in the last couple of weeks. So I'm okay with it. Um, I think this is a game, if you get overtime, like, you, yeah, all of a sudden you're getting 40, 45 minutes of Tucker Jeffries. It feels uh, a lot better. But I get it, Jay. Like, I don't I don't know how often I'm going to get to that. But this is the type of guy that you would rather spend up for uh, yeah. than some of these guys that are in absolute just smash spots that are going to be sitting down on the last – five minutes of the game so he's there uh, i think Atten Wright is kind of interesting at 5800 he's kind of been the you know the, the i don't want to say the second option because you, you got brody there too uh but you know the, the next guy's up really uh as far as usage takes a lot of shots kind of shot dependent so he's gonna have to knock down his threes watching the state side though man like so good defensively it is kind of scary to, to roster some of these drake dudes uh eric is there is there anybody that you're interested in? What What is your take on paying up for Devries at 9,700 in this kind of like weird total, even though you know this game is going to be fire from a basketball perspective? Yeah, well, look, I mean, I'm I'm going to let uh, sentimentality steer me towards Tucker Devries at, at 9.7K. But I, I think the the more practical argument is that this, you know, this game environment is one that is is going to be close. They're going to they're going to lean on him heavily as they have throughout the entire year. And I, I don't know if many people are going to go up to the price king that, you know, they haven't been playing on a whole lot of slates, right? So, um, you know, all these are things that I, I think are, you know, checks, uh, you know, in the in the pros column for for Tucker Devries. Um, looking up and down the rest of the Drake side, uh, we, can talk, we can talk about me and my Brody, Darnell Brody here, 6.4K. I mean, look, they're they're going to need him to be physical inside. He he absolutely has, you know, the the double double upside in his locker. Twenty three percent usage rate, twenty percent shot rate, almost forty percent rebound rate. And he can also deal it out fifteen percent assist rate. So a lot of different ways that he can get there at six point four k. You know, there 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 are just there are so many options in this mid tier. You know, he's he, he's going to be kind of overlooked. So you you know you have. You have the contrarian angle there, but for for me on the Drake side, it really all starts with with Tucker Devries. Yeah, going to have to find a way to fit him in somehow in some lineups because the ceiling there is just astronomical. And Mike, like you said, the amount of shots that Devries is going to get up in this matchup <laughs> alone, like it's there's a reason that he's the price game, right, Eric? Uh, Start us off here on Washington State side. Four guys playing max minutes. We like to see that, and we also like to see like the prices over here. It's not like we're having to get into the AK nine K mm-hmm. range. Not even close uh, for any of these Washington State guys. So, uh, how are you feeling? 
Feeling okay. Um, you know, Drake is is good defensively. Um, you know, so that that is something to keep in mind. But they did just they did struggle defending the the two pointer, two hundred and forty sixth in the country in that regard. And if you go all the way back to the top of the show two hours ago, when I was saying that there are some juicy mid tier guys, a seven k Isaac Jones, seven point three k to be exact, who's got legit. 40 to 45 upside on his range is chief among them in, in those examples, right? Uh, just so, so underrated as a player. His price is down a little bit. He leads the team in two-point attempts, 314 shots inside of the arc, shooting 60% on those shots. So definitely like that he's getting the boost. You know, I, I think he goes overlooked because there are so many guys that are at 7K flat or even a little bit below that that are going to draw a ton of ownership. So like how this one sets up for Isaac Jones, but also, you know, Miles Rice, one of those guys sitting at 7K flat that I think is going to be drawing a little bit more interest. Um, you know, the he's really the reason why this team is in the tourney. He's had a tremendous freshman year, 26% both usage and shot rate, dishes out those dimes at a 23% clip, can poke out steals as well, 3% there. You know, he probably feels like he's a little bit more suited for cash, right? You just don't see him getting to, you know, those those ceiling outcomes as often as you would like. But, you know, there, there are plenty of guys around this price tag who do have some more upside in their locker. So, you know, Miles Rice is probably not going to be all that popular, but he, he does he does offer a pretty solid floor. So with Washington State, that's, you know, those are the two names that really stick out to me. But Mike, anyone else on uh, on the uh, on the Washington State side that we need to touch on here? Yeah, we got we got to get Jalen Wilson here, man. Like he just takes a ton of shots, plays a ton of minutes now. I mean, getting into the 30s at 6200 pretty regularly. Uh, I feel great about him in, in tournament spots. So, yeah, uh, he's just doing a lot and just not really coming off the floor uh, very often. So, yeah, love me some Jalen Wills here. Um, Jack Amovsky's he's 5600. Like I don't. I don't think we need to do that. Um, I'm kind of with you. I I prefer Isaac Jones in tournaments over Miles Rice, but if you're playing like double ups and stuff like Miles Rice, like <laughs> like it feels like you're just going to get your four X and, and just kind of move on. So yeah, um, yeah absolutely. Uh, I love that call right there. But uh, yeah, man, is that uh, is that is that ra- almost wrapping it up uh, outside of some hey, cores here, Mister Mister? My Mike? God, my God, we made it two hours and twenty two minutes, and we have made it through sixteen games, breaking it all down. And if you made it through with us, we appreciate that. And even if you hung out for like five minutes, hey, you're doing your part in the Green Screens Media Universe by hanging out with us here, hopping in the live chat, uh, doing it, leaving a comment if you're watching uh, when we're not live and hitting those like and subscribe buttons as well. Let's get to the core four before we get out of here. We're going to give you, Mike's going to give you a core four. And then Eric and I are going to give you some plays that we think you should definitely work into your lineups as well. So, Mike, for your core four, what do you think? And you were you were sort of hinting earlier at needing some mid-tier guys that are going to go five, six x, maybe mm-hmm. even more than that, and uh, you know have a feeling that that's where you're going to go. <laughs> yeah, uh, with this the, core four. I mean, we could have made we could have played like 10 course tonight. I mean, honestly, yeah. that's how many players there are. You can play stars and scrubs. You can play mid tier for the sake of like tournament style. Like just try, you want to, you know, you want to get to the 25 K who are some guys that can give you that five to six X. I, I feel really good about Jordan Lathan. Uh, we talked about Moorhead state, Illinois defense, not great. Right. Um, I want to go to that. Well, uh, hell you can play really any of the Moorhead guys, uh, they're they're all in play for sure. Jalen Wells, I just talked about him. Like he's gonna play 38 minutes or so. Um, has shown five x plus, right? Uh, he just shoots a ton of shots. When he's on the floor, he's gonna get some rebounds, get some assists. DJ Horn, 6200. I mean, this is too cheap. Uh, the upside here, the 35 range here. Nolan Hickman, 6400. All of these guys have 35 high 30s upside. Um, you know, this is kind of the, the mid tier type, uh, you know, you're going to get 35 to you know nearly 40 on each of these guys at their ceiling. So I'm leaving you with a, uh, a new record here, uh, for the one and done crew, 6.3 K per player. Oh, you can absolutely just, people. 
you can absolutely just put eight guys together that score 35 to 40 fantasy points uh, in this mid tier. So uh, that'll, that'll be, I mean, these are, we say core four, right? But honestly, everyone's in the player pool, right? Um, you can play anybody, Eric, you got some guys that you want to throw into the mix here. Man, I'm going to, I'm going to go in and add to this core. Someone that's actually below the average remaining a chore, a chore, Pop them in, get up to 6.5K per left, or really any of the cheap Samford guys. I think you can make a very strong case for, as I did with Caleb Love, uh, 7.6K. I mean, yes, it's it's terrifying. I am ready to be hurt again. I might be hurt again, but I will click the button on Caleb Love <laughs> at 7.6K pretty much any time that, uh, that you see him down there, which is not all that often. So you have to take advantage of it. And then uh, Tushones for for Long Beach. He's coming in at six point three k. Another guy that can uh, can bring this average remaining salary per per player up. Right, he's sitting at six point three k. Huge rates. You know, this is the game where they're yeah. they're going to need him to to get involved if they want to stay competitive. So those are the uh, those are the other names that I I feel inclined to rotate around. Jay, anyone else that uh, that's catching your eye that we haven't talked about yet? You said Caleb Love's name, and then it was like, I got chills, they're multiplying. It's like shit yeah. running down my spine. Man, I can't help it, but I love that guy. I love I love him, and I hate him at the same time. Um, yeah, huge rights there for, for Tishonis. I'm going to say Esquerra, and one of the reasons mm-hmm. why, I mean, we, we talk about all cardio teams. He is like literally, <laughs> if you look it up in Webster's Dictionary, Webster's Dictionary defines all cardio team as Javier Esquerra. Um, yeah, we don't really like to pay it. We like to catch guys before they hit up. But, I mean, at 4,100, and if he's playing 36 minutes, 38 minutes, like 4,300, excuse me, um, like it's just hard not to, to consider him there. Dessou at 7K flat, no need to worry. My accountant handles that. Dylan Dessou for Texas. My God, the ceiling game. If he puts up 45, 50 fantasy points, like it's possible. It's within the realm of possibility. He's just, yeah. Ace Miss, like Micah was saying earlier, Ace Miss in March is a play, but Dessou, I feel like, is the one Longhorn with that ceiling. Uh, another 7K flat guy is Blackshear from Nevada, just too cheap in general. And then Devries and Holmes at 96 and 97. You can fit them into these lineups because look at this. Look at how much is left here. You can you can pay for a Devries or a Holmes at ninety six or ninety seven k, and you still yeah you can do whatever you want. What did you slide in there? Okay, we got so Esqueda. Now you're back to fifty six. And Esqueda. Oh, we're leaving the one thing. Well, the one blank there. Oh, the production <laughs> team really. Yeah, you're gonna get an right email there. from. You're uh... gonna get a strongly worded message. There. Okay. <laughs> it's too late. Everyone jockings is asleep. <laughs> hey, that's all right. Hey, but really though, you're gonna get the point is, ladies and gents, broskies and broskets of the green screens media universe. You can do whatever you want with this slate, and you're be gonna free. have to get a little bit spread crazy your wings to beat the 800 gazillion teams that you're gonna need to beat to win 20k. But hey, we're looking for commas, not comas. So let's make sure we get to it just some closing thoughts here gentlemen we made it through the whole slate mike any closing captain's comments here yeah i mean jay has got it right robin jones jeff saying thank you uh i just want to say thank you to everybody i mean i know we're not we still got more dfs shows and obviously the tournament starts tomorrow it's kind of bittersweet in we uh we worked really hard this entire year and just thanks to everybody in the green screens media universe uh you guys know who you are uh, day ones and you know, even people that are, you know, day, what is it, like probably day 600, 700 since we started this thing. So I just <laughs> feel very, uh, very lucky, very accomplished, uh, and just really uh, honestly humbled uh, to, to be able to do this. And I've had so much fun uh, with you guys. And I hope everyone has a great tournament. Um, I don't even care, honestly. If I mean, yeah, right, I care. I'll be pissed off tomorrow <laughs> by like 3 o'clock. But, like, honestly, like when I can sit back and think about it, uh, I'm just going to be happy that, that we got to this point and I'm excited for it, man. So Eric, any, any closing thoughts uh, before we get on out of here from this long ash, longest stream of the uh, GSM history here, <laughs> man, tough, uh, tough act to follow uh, completely echo your, your sentiment, right? Like we've been 
We've been grinding away on these CBB streets for a couple of years now. And where we are today is, is, is miles further than I think most of us thought this would ever get. And it has a lot to do with the breadheads that have been riding with us from day one and the people that have been hopping on along the way. So appreciate everyone swinging through at various points throughout the season. This is why we put together the one and done bracket challenge. So you can get in there, mix it up with all of us, but also potentially walk home with a new addition to your collection. So just, just love how much this, this community is growing and building. And it's uh it's, it's definitely a point of reflection as we're about to throw the ball in the air on the match March madness tournament. But like Mike said, that, that doesn't mean we're slowing down, right? Mike's already at what transfer portal. List <laughs> it's like 86 now. 600 yeah, people in the portal 100. already. 600. I'm not listening yeah. to 86 though. I can't go this fast. Ooh. Yeah, it, we, it, this is this is merely the uh, the turning of the page of the of the regular season chapter before we head into postseason play and eventually into the off season, right? The top five hundred transfer portal list that we always coming. tease Mike about. It's, it's reality. It's coming, <laughs> ladies and gents. It will be here. Thanks for Craig, Mama Rocks, Fort Lift, Jeremy, Micah, Kalen, Psych Guy, Mills Pays Bills, Sam H. Sam the Sniper, Snake Size, Jeff G, Scott, Dylan, Ryan S, and J N and J. I man, I, I think this is, might be the first time that you've commented. And if not, it's 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 pretty close to that. And already the love you're showing to the most electrifying oh, man. man in college basketball and in entertainment, Tyler Kolek, about 36 hours until he starts breaking ankles. Absolutely loving that. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, for the kind words there. We love what we do. We love the Green Screens Media Universe, and we appreciate everybody for hanging out with us, everything that you've done to build us up to here, and we are not slowing down, and we won't slow down when this tournament's over either. We'll be in the off season, bringing you transfer portal updates, bringing you all of the news, interviewing coaches as they're getting messages on their phone saying that they're getting guys that enter the transfer <laughs> portal, Kim English. Shout out, Coach English. Uh, Shout out, Coach English, for sure. Shout out to all of you in the Green Screens Media Universe. Hit all those buttons for us and uh, tell somebody that you love them. Take care of yourself. Get those brackets filled out. Get your lineups in. Let's see some comments tomorrow and all weekend long. Looks like we hit 850 to close out the show. Hey, we yo. love the Green Screens Media Universe. We did it. Thank you for doing that. Thanks for hanging out with us. Let's get this bread. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.